Good evening. I am Mayor Jen Wallison and welcome to the Menlo Park City Council's November 14th special and regular City Council meeting. This is a hybrid meeting with City Council, City staff, and members of the public participating in City Council chambers. I would like to introduce City Council members and staff present. I have Vice Mayor Cecilia Taylor and City Council members Maria Dorr and Betsy Nash. City Council member Drew Combs will join the regular meeting. Staff present include our City Manager Justin Murphy, our City Attorney Near Doherty, and our City Clerk Judy Heron. City Clerk Heron, can you please provide instructions to the City Council and members of the public on how this meeting will proceed? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So for members of the public who wish to provide comment on an item on tonight's agenda, after the mayor calls for public comment on that item, if you are participating virtually, we'll ask that you engage your hand feature in the bottom of the screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, you can press star nine at that time. Participating in person, we ask that you complete a speaker card at that back table and return it to me at the clerk's desk. Includes my instructions at this time. Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Heron. All right, we'll begin with agenda review. Agenda review provides advance notice to members of the public and city staff of any modifications to the agenda order and any requests from the city council members under city council member reports. Does the city council wish to pull or modify any agenda items to be heard after the last regular business item, which is J5? Okay. Then uh, we're moving on to D, closed session. Uh, city Clerk Karen, can you please call for public comment for closed session item D1? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on item D1, conference with legal counsel for anticipated litigation, if you are participating virtually, please engage that hand feature bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine. Participating in person, please complete a speaker card and return to me at the clerk's desk. And this will be the final call for public comment on our closed session item D1. Seeing no hands or cards, Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you. All right, at this time, the city council will adjourn this meeting and reconvene in closed session. We will reconvene the regular meeting no earlier than 6 p.m. And uh, we will anticipate definitely not reconvening later than 6.30, but we're shooting for 6 p.m. Thank you.
Okay, having our city council back at our in-person dais, Mayor Willison, you may recall the meeting. Thank you, City Clerk Heron, and good evening, everyone. I am Mayor Jen Wallison, and I would like to recall to order the City Council's November 14th special and regular City Council meeting. This is a hybrid meeting with City Council, City staff, and members of the public participating in City Council chambers. For those in virtual attendance, please note that there is a globe icon near the hand feature on your screen. This will allow you to listen to tonight's meeting in Spanish through item J1. Our interpreters this evening are Lina Gutierrez Escriban, Gabriela Zayas Alom, Maya Fonseca, and Gilberto Martin del Campo. Thank you all so much for your services today. Muy buenas noches. Para la reunión de esta noche contamos con servicios de interpretación al español, tanto de forma virtual como en persona. Para aquellos que se conectan a través de Zoom, por favor busquen el icono del globo terráqueo que dice Interpretation y si hacen clic ahí podrán ver la opción de Español o Spanish para escuchar la interpretación al español. Para aquellos que nos acompañan en persona, eh, pasen por acá por favor por la mesa para eh, prestarles el equipo de interpretación y que puedan escuchar eh, la reunión de hoy en español en persona. Nuestros intérpretes de esta noche son Lina Gutiérrez Escribano, Gabriela Saya Salom, Maya Fonseca y Gilberto Martín del Campo. La interpretación se va a brindar hasta el punto J1 de la agenda. Gracias. Muchas gracias y bienvenidos a todos. Ok, um, I wanted to let everyone know that public speaker time may be limited this evening. We will use the rubric of three minutes up to nine speakers. If there's 10 to 20 speakers, there will be two minutes. And if there's more than 20 speakers, there'll be one and a half minutes. So um, you can plan your public speaking time accordingly. And we will ask at the beginning of each item when public comment um, is announced um, to raise your hand and City Clerk Heron will explain how we will do that. But we do ask that everyone wishing to speak on any given agenda item, let us know um, when we call for public comment so that we can assess how many speakers we have and determine how long um, each public comment time will be. We do this so everyone has an opportunity to speak and so that we can arrive at the council discussion and deliberation uh, before we all fall asleep. Okay. Um, with that, we are moving on to F, which is roll call. I would like to introduce our city council members and our staff present. We have Vice Mayor Cecilia Taylor. We have city council members Drew Combs, Maria Dorr, and Betsy Nash with us. Staff included are our city manager, Justin Murphy, our assistant city manager, Stephen Stolte, our city attorney, Nira Doherty, and our city clerk, Judy Heron. I would now like to move on to G, which is our report from closed session. I would like to introduce again our city attorney, Nira Doherty, for a report out from closed session. Thank you, Mayor. There is no reportable action. Thank you, City Attorney Doherty. We are now moving on to H, which is general public comment. Under public comment, the public may address the city council on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the city council once under public comment for a limit of three minutes with the uh, things I told you about. You are not required to provide your name or city of residence, but it is helpful. The city council cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, and therefore the city council cannot respond to non-agenda issues brought up under public comment other than to provide general information. I will call for public comment at the appropriate time for members of the public to address the city council on any item under agenda sections, consent calendar, regular business and informational items. City Clerk Karen, can you please call now for general public comment? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time for any member of the public who wishes to provide comment for an item that is not on tonight's agenda. If you are participating virtually, please engage that hand feature bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine. If participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table and return to me at the clerk's desk.
I have one speaker so far, and this will be the final call for public comment for items not on tonight's agenda. Okay, so Mayor Willison, we have one speaker. Actually, it's a duo of speakers. It will be Antonia and Abby. And please put the microphone close to your mouth. Thanks. My name is Abby McLeod. Um, and I'm Antonia Moo. And we are both part of the Youth Advisory Committee here um, for Menlo Park. Um, we're both juniors at MA. And, and yeah. so we came here to present ourselves, to introduce ourselves as members of the YAC community. And we want to express how excited we are to be a part of this team and to really help our community. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for introducing yourself. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Can you, um, one moment, ladies, can you please let us know when the next Youth Advisory Committee meeting is and maybe a little bit about what you've been doing? Yes. So it is this Thursday, um, so in two days, and we are currently planning a flea market for teenagers in our community to be able to make their own crafts and goods to be able to sell to other people so they can make a profit free for us to do also because they'll be supplying all of their own stuff. And we're planning to have this take place in February so we have more time to plan and to gather enough vendors to make a successful event. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Okay, and with that, Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you. We are now moving on to I, which is our consent calendar. Under the consent calendar, the city council may take action to approve routine business items in one motion, unless a city council member, city staff member, or a member of the public requests that an item be discussed or continued to a later date. City Clerk Karen, can you please call for public comment on the consent calendar? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on our consent calendar items I-1, city council meeting minutes, I two, the approval of continued funding with the California Department of Education for the Bell Haven Child Development Center. And E three, a resolution executing a funding agreement with Rebuild Together Peninsula. If you are participating virtually, please engage chat hand feature bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine. Participating in person, please complete a speaker card at the back table. Return to me at the clerk's desk. And this will be the final call for public comment on our consent calendar items I-1 through I-3. Seeing no hands or cards, Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you so much. Um, any comments, questions, or motions regarding the consent calendar? And since we are all in person tonight, um, we'll be voting electronically on our screens. I'm not seeing any, let's see. I right. bear with us while we boot up the uh, computer system here. So it looks like I'm seeing. I have moved to accept the consent calendar. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. So the motion has been made by City Council Member Nash with a second by Vice Mayor Taylor to approve the consent calendar. Any further City Council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, City Clerk Karen. We are now moving on to J, which is our regular business. Under regular business, the City Council considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require City Council approval. And the first regular business item is J1. Select names and or dedications for the new multi-service center facility under construction at 100 Terminal Avenue. And here to introduce this item is our Library and Community Services Director, Sean Reinhardt. I also see uh, Ms. Natalia Jones with us as well. Good evening. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. And as the Mayor mentioned, joining me here at the, um, at the staff station is Library and Community Services Manager, Natalia Jones, who's been involved in the process uh, throughout. Um, however, for the 
purposes of tonight, we're going to keep the presentation fairly brief. I think the information is pretty well known. It's in the staff report because I, I believe those are interested in kind of moving on to the discussion. So um, I'll just quickly go through these slides, but happy to stop, slow down, answer questions. Uh, the recommendation before the city council tonight is that the city council review the naming policy, consider community input and advisory body recommendations, and then uh, take two actions. One is to select an overall name and or dedication for the new multi-service facility at 100 Terminal Avenue. And two is to select names and or dedications for each of the five major programs that will be in the new facility. That's Aquatic Center, Library, Recreation Center, Senior Center, and Youth Center. There have been multiple public meetings on this topic over the past several months. All of those records are available on the city website, including staff reports, meeting minutes, videos. That's all listed in the staff report, links to all that material. This can all help the city council with your decision-making process. Um, and again, all of that information is listed in the staff report. Here's a couple of renderings of the inside of the new facility. Um, there are also a number of decision aids for the city council to avail yourselves of if you so choose tonight. Uh, the naming policy is attached to the report. The city council updated that back in March. Uh, the summary list of names that have been suggested by community members throughout the past several months. A decision matrix to kind of just help focus in on you know, your decisions. Um, the joint recommendations from the advisory bodies, as well as compilations of written community comments that have been submitted. Here's a look at that decision matrix. If it is helpful for city council, when you get to that point, we're happy to kind of display this on the screen and, and populate it, um, it to support a motion if, if and when you decide to go to that point. Um, and then there's some information also covered in the staff report about the most recent names of major programs. They're listed here. Um, some background on the overall campus name, which uh, to date there has not been an official name for the overall campus, but that's one of the decisions being requested for the city council tonight for the new facility. Um, special note that Kelly Park is adjacent to the new facility. There hasn't been a process to rename Kelly Park. However, um, sometimes folks think of it and talk about it as part and parcel of the overall campus. So we just wanted to call that out. Um, there also in the staff report, um, a number of kind of summary considerations around the different signs that are planned for the new facility and how um, names could potentially be um, displayed in those signs. Um, and you can see them here on the slides. Um, I want to pause a moment on the dedication plaque. It is customary for significant new public buildings to have a dedication plaque. This is what intended to be like a permanent part of the building's edifice, usually to demarcate uh, like when the building was completed, uh, the major contributors to it, like the builder and elected officials, community members, and so forth. Uh, pretty, pretty common to have that. It's kind of separate and distinct from the facility's name, although it could be the same thing. Let's see, next steps, uh, just to round out the presentation portion, the city council may select any names or dedications that the city council desires. City council has the sole discretion to name or rename or dedicate or rededicate city facilities. Uh, there's no direct impact to the city's general fund associated with the naming selection, so long as it happens by the end of this calendar year. After that, there might be some additional costs. And that concludes the presentation portion. Uh, we do have some additional materials for reference. If needed, we can display them on screen, but that's the sum of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Reinhardt. Um, now I believe our city council subcommittee um, would like to speak on this item before we go to public comment. There's always a debate on who will talk first. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening, esteemed members of the city council and fellow community members. I want to first, before I go on any further, because I actually thought this was on the agenda this evening, is just to say happy Ruby Bridges today. Um, today is November 14th. The city of Menlo Park recognizes Ruby Bridges Walk to School Day. I know that at least two schools, um, actually three schools in Menlo Park, I think Laurel, uh, Beechwood, and Bell Haven all celebrated Ruby Bridges Walk to School Day. So if you haven't participated, I have a pin on today. 
um, look forward to November 14th of next year to do something with students in your community. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, esteemed city council members, uh, fellow community members. I want to express my gratitude for each of you, for each and every person who has attended, to each and every person who has participated in any city process. And also, most importantly, I want to thank our commissioners. I'm not sure if any of our commissioners are in the room today, but wanted to thank them for their public service. I also want to thank my colleagues. Um, a commitment to public service is challenging, especially in the evenings. Um, and I also want to thank Menlo Park residents for their volunteer service. A lot of folks um, commit their time and energy in providing public comment doing their own research, and also trying to do their best to help Menlo Park be better. I also wanna thank the, the city manager, the city attorney, the police chief. Together, we all make up Menlo Park. When this project first came to the city council, there was different leadership. So for me, I feel a little differently than what I am about to share about how I felt when this project was even created. It has been a fantastic and incredible journey for me to be a part of so many different conversations that have happened both in the public and behind the scenes. From having food access, which is our farmer's market that evolved into a mobile market during COVID that is now an open market once again, to our discussion around housing and anti-displacement policies and the city council had the potential to pass a robust tenant relocation ordinance and instead, in my opinion, it didn't help anyone. Conversations around development and zoning, I have made an effort more than once, and if there is an opportunity again, I will continue to make an effort to rezone areas in District 1 so that it will serve more of our existing residents and hopefully our future residents as well. And then there's the conversation of what we deserve as a community, specifically the Bellhaven community. We are the reasons why districts exist in Memo Park. And I say that because it had been almost four decades since an elected official from our community served on the Menlo Park City Council. And the only one that had done that before me was Billy Ray White. It is important for us to be in conversations both in the public and behind the scenes because that is how change happens. I believe having staff who are advocates of the community, if not from the community, best serve the community elected officials such as myself, and then also the community. We need you to continue to hold us accountable. It is the reason why I choose to be in this seat. It's because I wanted to be held accountable. I have led through integrity, transparency, accountability, and inclusion for the past five years as an elected official. And I brought all of those elements of myself into the discussion of the new multi-generational campus. That was initially the Bellhaven Multi-Generational Campus and then evolved into a project named of MPCC, which is the Menlo Park Community Campus. In 2020, the city council made it a priority that this project would be done quickly as possible. We never discussed that the naming process would be included in it. So it has taken much more time for us to get where we are today. And it honestly is a discussion that I was not happy to hear. Honestly, how did we get here? We have community members who have been advocating both publicly and privately, along with elected officials that do the same thing as, just a moment, that do the same thing to make, to make change in our community. I have always, always, always asked for exactly what I believe we deserve in the Treasure Triangle. We deserve a full service library. We deserve access to healthcare. We deserve a pharmacy and a bank, and we deserve clean air. We deserve all of the resources that exist in this city, right in our community. I believe that here we have this fantastic opportunity. And I believe one of my constituents, Mrs. Bim, said it wonderfully, that this is an opportunity to build community with this project. And instead the opposite has occurred. For me, I need to provide a little bit of background about how we got here. In the early part of 2019, myself and several other community members met with leadership at Facebook. 
On and off for many years before I was in office, folks have tried to get investment directly in our community. We talked over the years about investment and what a significant investment looks like. The Treasure Triangle has yet to see that investment, in my opinion, that it deserves. It has been underserved, under-resourced, underrepresented, and underinvested for too long. How do we change that with an entity such as Facebook in our city? We continue to advocate for investment, not just from Facebook, but also from the city of Menlo Park. This project is born out of frustration, dedication, disappointment, but most importantly, hope. It has been quite some time that I've talked to anyone specifically about this project because I felt it was more important to talk publicly from the dais once. It has been difficult hearing from my community members about what's happening in our city, specifically around the naming. It has taken a lot of time and a lot of energy from a lot of folks. And I think that it hasn't really been a pleasant process. And I know that I have not contributed to that, but if I have in your eyes, I apologize. I try to make it as open and inclusive as possible. In 2020, when the resolution was created, where the city of Menlo Park accepted, well, the city council accepted this project from Facebook, it was my intention to include the community who helped create this project into the resolution to ensure our voices were heard behind closed doors. That did not happen. And so we ended up creating a working group because we knew that there was still a lot of work that needed to be done. Those who have been active, those who have stayed in the trenches, those who have lived through decades of frustration and mistrust, went into a room and put together a project that was reflective of what the community deserved. Moving forward with the naming process, I encourage each of you to consider the profound impact a diverse and inclusive approach can have on the identity of the new multi-service center. Let us seize this opportunity to celebrate the richness of our community and leave a lasting legacy that reflects the values we hold dear. Today, I've come before you with a topic that has divided our community. The hope was that this would bring us together and not just as a community, but also as a city and a corporate entity. Once the discussion of the naming occurred, it, it became divisive. And from my recollection, there was not an agreement with anyone that anything would change. The names that I said that I would not put on the building, and this was in 2020, I was not supportive of putting Meta's name on the building, and I was not supportive of putting Menlo Park on the building. Our history in the community has already been destroyed, sadly. So how can a building encompass what our legacy truly is? The legacy of being redlined, the legacy of being underserved, underrepresented, and underinvested. And underinvested. Is that what we want to see in this new building? Is that a part of our legacy? How do we do, how do we do that when there is only a single voice determining that? We do that by including all voices. We do that by listening. And we do that most importantly by respecting one another. And that changed when it came to the naming process. What I heard from folks is that it was made about themselves. This is not about one person. This is not about one name. This is not just about one piece. This is about a community that has always felt like it was not included in the city of Menlo Park. That was my feeling in 2020. I will say this until the day that I'm no longer in office, that I believe the responsibility to our community comes from the city of Menlo Park, not a corporate entity. I do not pay taxes to corporate entities and neither do you. I do not pay taxes to you. We all pay taxes to a city, to a county and to a state. 
as we sat in this room, and I'm going back to 2020, or actually 2019, as we sat in this room, looking at what was possible for our community, and the decision was made by Facebook that all of us made a commitment that Facebook would provide a jewel for our community. In the resolution, the city, and I think I said this already, the city is to hand the keys to Facebook until the project is completed, which I am hoping is early 2024. My concern is that the voice that helped create this project was no longer in the room. The working group was established to create a place for folks who helped create this project to have a voice. We also extended that to stakeholders such as the Harris family and to Facebook. My legacy in this community started with my grandfather in the early 1950s. He shared with my father why he wanted to be a part of Menlo Park. He did not like the name Bell Haven. I share this with you because for me it's significant because the other side of my family wants Bell Haven because they believe it's a part of our legacy and it should not be excluded. So I have an internal conflict as well. When I listen to, listen to the different options, thoughts and feelings about what communities need, the first thing I think about is that we need a documentary, a documentary of why the Bellhaven neighborhood even exists. Then when we were made a city, becoming, we were a city, Bellhaven city, and then we were resourced as a neighborhood. We were bound not to prosper. We were never designed to. My grandfather's legacy was to be a part of Menlo Park. The second thing that we need to do is programming. The programming that was established, created, and that provided such an essential tool and mechanism for anyone who attended the Oneta Harris Community Center. Which ones were most effective? Which ones still exist? And how can we improve upon that today? When I think in terms of policy, as an elected official, I think about a 40-year plan, not a four-year plan, a 40-year plan. I think about seven generations, and I think about the community center. And to me, it's not just about one name, but we're thinking seven generations. Initially, we were talking about only building a library. When the only a library was on the table, my thought was, I want it named after Mr. Ms. Stamper. Why? Because she lived until she was over 90 years old. For me, when I saw her, I saw education. I saw love. I saw nourishment. And I saw discipline. And for me, that was important to establish in a community that has wanted to be included for so long. Then I have community members saying to me, well, wait a minute. Why do we have to put a single person's name on a building when there is so much history here to be learned? It's not just about one person. It's not just about one family. It's about all of us. And how do you reflect that in a name? Today, I will be supporting the, the names of the existing services to remain the same. My choice, my decision initially was not to put any name on the building, to wait until it's open. Let's wait until our history is documented inside the building. When we talked about staffing, what was it last week? We talked about how to fund it. Before this project, the Oneta Harris Center was opened 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's it, 40 hours a week. So if you wanted to go to the community center on the weekend, you were not able to, but now you will because the city council will allocate enough funding to keep the center open longer than what it was before. There's a few more things that I have on my paper, um, but I think that is more important and I have a hard time talking for this amount, <laughs> this length of time. I feel like my comment should be just like your public comment, which is three minutes. I think that we are in a place and a space where we have to make hard decisions. And my decision is not gonna be what everybody in this room wants. And so I hope that we can respect our differences and still figure out a way to work together because we all need one another, whether you see it today or not. My co-colleague, 
Council Member Nash has been supportive of, of the work that we've done on this subcommittee. And so for me, I am supportive and the city, the subcommittee is supportive of keeping the existing names on the inside of the building, but we are not supportive of putting one name on the name of the building. There was a debate on whether to put no name or to recommend to the city council specific names. I personally don't want a name on the building. Just don't support a name at this time. Council Member Nash, did you want to add anything? So, uh, um, City Clerk Karen, could you please put up the slide from the subcommittee? So, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your feelings and vision, thoughts, and history living in Menlo Park and the future here. Um, it's very, very helpful. Do you hear that? Thank you. And thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your advocacy to get this project to where it is today. And to everyone else in the audience, on the commissions, on staff, council, um, it really, it has been quite a journey. It's still quite an adventure to get this building up and running. And it's going to be very, very exciting. So the subcommittee, um, Vice Mayor Taylor and I um, went through the naming and what we should have in front of you is what we would like to have as a starting place. We thought it would be beneficial to share this prior to public comment and prior to um, the council discussion. And we would, um, as Vice Mayor Taylor said, we recommend leaving the existing names on each of the functional buildings um, as such. And for the overall campus, we um, would like to have a discussion about leaving it unnamed, um, possibly having the Bellhaven multi-generational community campus or neighborhood community campus. So with that, um, do we have any additional comments? And I just, I want to um, also call out, we've had a number of residents who have been working very closely um, with the subcommittee, with staff, um, and really appreciate all the, all the efforts that have, people have put into this. So thank you. So I believe the order that we're gonna do this in um, is to hear the staff presentation, then the subcommittee report, and then to open it up to public comment. Uh, Council Member Combs. I just want to thank the subcommittee for all of your work. Uh, I know this has been really challenging and really hard, both personally, and so I, I, I just want to thank you. Whether I agree with where you're at or not, we will have that discussion, but I have no doubt that you have put lots of time and effort into this and there has been some sleepless nights and so I very much appreciate it. Well said. Thank you, Councilmember Combs. Um, so with that, um, we are going to be opening this item up for public comments. I want to um, explain again how this is going to work. Um, City Clerk Karen is going to call for public comment at that time if you wish to speak and she'll go over this again, but I'm going to do it first. Um, you either raise your hand if you're making a virtual comment or you make sure you submit a comment card to the city clerk who's sitting uh, right here next to the dais. Um, when we make this call for public comment, we're asking all those who wish to comment to uh, express their desire to comment so we can assess how many commenters we have. We then plan to have a last call for public comment and then we will be cutting off uh, public comment. Um, so please, if you are considering making a public comment, it's always better to get your name in there. And then if you choose not to speak, that's fine. Um, depending on how many speakers we have, we'll determine how long the public comment will be. I also want to um, express that we know this is um, uh, very complex and a lot of differing opinions on this item. And we ask that everyone um, refrain from making any audible 
comments, either um, happy sounds, upset sounds. Um, we ask that you please don't clap or um, make any other comments. We wanna make sure that everyone in council chambers and following online feels that their opinion um, is valid and um, is welcomed here. Um, so that's just a matter of council um, chambers discretion. And we're, if needed, I will remind folks of that. And I believe that covers everything. We do uh, very much look forward to your comments. So City Clerk Karen, can you please take it from here? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison, and appreciate um, those instructions in detail. So right now we are taking public comment for item J1, which is select names and or dedications for the new multi-service center facility under construction at 100 Terminal Avenue. So it's at this time, if you would like to provide public comment on this item, if you are participating virtually, please engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine. If participating in person, please complete a speaker card at the back table and return to me at the clerk's desk. And as mentioned, if you do wish to provide comment on this item, now is the time to engage that hand feature, bottom of your screen, calling in, star nine, in person, complete a speaker card. Okay, this is the final call for public comment on item J1, the name and or dedication for the multi-service center at 100 Terminal Avenue. Okay, so Mayor Willison, we are at a total of 13 speakers. Great, thank you, City Clerk Karen. So as I mentioned before, um, we will give two minutes um, given the number of speakers for public comment. Thank you. Thank you. So our first speaker will be Victoria Flemings followed by Greg Goodwin. I'd like to address everyone. How's everyone doing this evening? I see that we are coming close to the holidays and please keep in mind that we, a lot of us do believe in God and do believe in honesty and trust. And we like to believe in America. I'm standing here, I am Onetta Harris's niece. My aunt has done many things for the community. She has taken care of many people. I see on this wall, all these people that are dressed, everyone has their title. They don't have to worry about their title being defaced at all. Menlo Park, you have this beautiful side over here. Why are you worried about the other side of Menlo Park? Let us brown people have something. You've been taken from us for so many years. You've defaced all our statues. You've taken our name off of everything. You know that Columbus did not discover America. You know that you have our bodies buried under Central Park in Manhattan. You know that you have our legendary person right up under, the Long Ranger, right up under San Francisco. You have lied about him for many years and said he was a white man. You lie about the cowboys saying they're white men. We're the only people that are called boys and girls. When are you going to respect us? All over the entire world, we're hated. They hate us with every stick and bone in their body. And speaking of sticks, let's talk about the witch has broke her cane. Britain has already broke the cane now. The spell is broken. You kept us in slavery for 200 extra years. How many years are you going to keep us down? 
Onetta Harris not only helped the children of the community, she helped the white, the Spanish, the Chinese, the brown. She didn't care what race you were. She cared about the love and the dignity that she had for everybody in the community. You have to stand for something in this world. And as you make your choice of what Onetta Harris, the community center, should be, forgive me. I have overspoke my time, but please don't take my name, my auntie's name away. I beg of you. Is anybody gonna give me their time? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, kindly. Our next speaker is Greg Goodwin, followed by Brown. Good evening, Council, <clears throat> and God bless everybody in here. Yo, Stephen, David Diga también, okay. Um, I am here uh, to say that Onetta Harris Community Center is already named Onetta Harris Community Center and has been. I wanted to talk a little bit about the history because people that haven't been in the neighborhood have no idea how much impact Onetta Harris had. For example, <clears throat> East Palo Alto and Menlo Park, Bellhaven are essentially one community. And there was a time when uh, East Palo Alto was considered the murder capital of the world. It was more murders there than it was in Beirut, Lebanon. And, um, you know, uh, drugs and uh, guns were put in the neighborhood, and um, the kids was out selling uh, drugs and uh, had turf wars, and nobody that lived through that knew what it was like. It was car burglaries. It was home burglaries. And um, just to show you the kind of respect Mother Harris had, if kids, young people, uh, were doing something they didn't have no business doing out on the streets like that, and they saw Mother Harris, they would uh, try to hide the guns and the drugs and everything, and, and uh, say, oh, hi, Ma hi, Mrs. Harris, like they wasn't doing anything wrong. That was the kind of respect she had. The most important point is, out of all of the murders and all of the bad things that materialized during that time, I was working in juvenile probation at the time, I want you to know that, so I know what was going on. <clears throat> Out of all of that, you never saw none of that stuff come to Bellhaven, uh, Onetta Harris Community Center. They respected her that much. There was no none of the drug activities, <clears throat> none of the murders. Thank you. Okay, okay, I, I, I went past my time. Okay, Thank God bless everybody, okay? So next is Brown, followed by Gabrielle Harris. I love what you've done. Just really quickly, I, I know it might be challenging, but could the clerk or the mayor give people like a 30, 30 second notice? <laughs> Just that like maybe they have 30 more seconds. Um, and I think that that might help. Yeah, City Clerk Karen, can you assist I can, with that? Yes, Thank I you so that. much. Thank you, Councilmember Combs. Thank you, Mayor. I'll do a Chuck Woolery love connection, two minutes and two seconds. Look, what you guys have done so far is incredible. Um, I'm kind of an interloper. I'm not from here, but I just got here to East Palo Alto. Someone just mentioned, but I love EPA now. Um, but we serve schools from in the peninsula. We start in San Francisco at Lowell and Lincoln and the two private schools, Sacred Heart Cathedral and Reardon. And we go all the way down to, I call it the South Bay. They still call themselves the peninsula with Willow Glen and Archbishop Mitty. But in the peninsula, Menlo Park is the heart and the soul. Anybody you talk to, it's Menlo Park. Menlo Park has two nice schools in Sacred Heart Prep and Menlo, which I get to serve, but they also have MA. And at MA is you see a microcosm of the entire world. I did something to learn the peninsula. I got on the train and the buses to find out where we're going. Went into Palo Alto and I kept seeing on these buses, Onetta Harris Center. So I'm asking these kids, where's this Onetta Harris Center? So I get on the bus 
and I come to uh, Menlo Park. Now, my best friend, because I'm an EPA, my best friend would always tell me that he grew up in East Menlo Park. I'm looking on the map. I can't find no East Menlo Park. But he showed me East Menlo Park, which is Bellhaven uh, community. And it's just so fascinating that... We're at the 32nd mile. Oh, I'm good. At, at Palo Alto, you get on the train, and it's Oneta Harris Center. So it, it turned my brain on. I got to find out who this Annetta Harris was. And so I look it up and I get happy heart. So I'm telling you guys, you're doing a great job there. And keep this place the soul of the peninsula. Our next speaker is Gabrielle Harris, followed by Francis with donated time from Israel Harris. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gabrielle Harris, and I'm the great granddaughter of Oneta Harris. I'm 19 years old, and I'm currently a student at Santa Clara University. I do have a midterm to study for, so I'm going to try to keep this brief. Um, I'm here to say I think her name should be on the new community center campus. Throughout the course of these meetings, I have learned so much about my great grandmother's contributions to the Bellhaven community and how her life impacted so many people positively. I know that I wouldn't be where I am pursuing a higher education and actively taking on leadership roles at my school without the legacies of my great grandmother and other black women who paved the way for future generations by showing us it is possible to make meaningful change in our communities. Even if we're not here in person, the younger gen generations are paying attention. We're reading articles, seeing tweets, and talking amongst our peers. With this vote, the city council has an opportunity to tell future generations that we matter, that our contributions will matter, and we don't have to be a multi-billion dollar owner of a company to make a difference. Thank you. And our next speaker will be Francis with donated time from Israel Harris, followed by Zerubbabel Campbell. Apologies. Um, we will have Francis with donated time from Israel Harris and Jean Starks, and then uh, Zerubbabel Campbell. Thank you for everyone who don donated me their time. And okay, so I wrote something before you start on me. Okay, so I bought a witness with me about the kid's grandmother <clears throat> who worked personally with Miss Harris. And she left a testimony of how she worked with her, how she walked with her. And I didn't know which one to do first. So let me read mine first, and then it co and coincides with this. The invisible suitcase. Miss Harris carried a suitcase for over 40 years for this community. She carried it around with her. And do you want to know what's in that suitcase? In that suitcase, she kept love and, and dreams and determination and let me put this down. In that suitcase, she carried love and peace and education. And in that suitcase, she held me. But in that suitcase, but in that suitcase, she held us. She, it was empty. She had her love, her peace, her dreams. But then she took the suitcase and put a person in it and put another person in the suitcase because she wanted them to see. If you can stay near the mic so the folks on Zoom can also hear the comment. Thank she you. wanted us to succeed. And so what I'm saying is that Ms. Harris, this is not a suitcase. This is a carry-on case. Please carry her name on. And for the duration, I'm gonna let the kid's grandmother tell you the rest, okay? So just bear with me. <clears throat> this is from the kid's grandmother's own voice. And she can speak better than I can. And her name is Miss Dorothy Rose. That she had all the confidence and could see all the potential a lot of these little children had. And she encouraged them 
own as well as her own children. Because mm -hmm. I know her children, I remember we had meetings up sometimes at their house. I would drive, I have her to wherever that house was. I would drive, I think. And, and uh, we had a, we, we had a, me and uh, sometimes they don't know this house. But, and I probably, Ken and Kenny and Tyrone would remember uh, a lot of things like that, you know, when, we, when they were coming up with the kids. But I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that right now. As uh, other kids their age, young young men and women now, that is their age, can, they got a lot of encouragement from Mrs. Harris. Mm -hmm. So much things, so many things I can think of. But, but, What's the what's the most what's the most president thing you can think of? She did a profound thing that she did that you can think of. Profound. Oh, she didn't she didn't do help to build the children up, baby. Mm -hmm. That was a, that was her main thing. When she was working in that school district, she touched up many children. So I can't tell her all of because she sometimes she had the talking to him and counseling and talking to him and encouraging him and stuff like that. But see, you can't pinpoint those things, those those uh pump coverage, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, those moments that she shared with various students working in the district because she had a many a students that to attend to. Mm -hmm. So well, that, 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 that's that in that in that suitcase it's a whole lot of stuff that came out of that suitcase. That suitcase in higher places today mm. because of this is a parents. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. So and a lot a lot of them all gone them and, and, and she and her and her and her son became became a realtor and and he had he a lot of a home non home buyers became came to, to home buyers. Mm -hmm. Homeowners? Uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's a bad laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's that's a one that is a wonderful thing. Thanks for the insurance to be on that. Mm -hmm. Apologies, we're at the twenty second mark. But, but you know what, Francine? I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I can't elaborate too much on, on anything else because I just know she was a, she was not a good Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was the one. Now I don't know if I just want to tell my own touch. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. And thank you. And all I want to say last before I leave here, she left her thumbprints, not only just in Menlo Park, but up and down the counselor. And so she left her thumbprints, but we are her fingerprints. We just don't want the name changed. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker is Ruba Bell Campbell, followed by Charles Thard. I have to run up here and say I love the way you said the name. You got it right. 
good evening um, to the esteemed city council and to fellow community members. Um, it was so beautiful to hear um, Vice Mayor Taylor say to leave it at existing name um, as the Oneta Harris Community Center because those are my sentiments as, as well. And why do we need to change it? And um, Menlo Park is known for its trees, the city of trees. And um, it's all about a legacy. That's what we're talking about here is a legacy. And the city of trees in Menlo Park are so beautiful. Uh, it allows the, 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 the birds to, to have housing and insects to have housing and for us to have oxygen and so forth and so on. So you see the beauty of the trees, but you don't see the root system of the trees. You, you see the branches and you, you see the leaves, but you don't see the, 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 the foundation of, of the roots of those trees. Ms. Harris is one of our root systems. My grandparents came out here in the 50s in the Little Park. My parents came out here in uh, 62. I had an uncle that lived on Madeira. I had an auntie that lived on Carlton. I had an auntie and an uncle that lived on Almanar. And if I turn back and look at the branches and the leaves of the root system of Onetta Harris. We're at 30 seconds. Thank you. And that's all we're, we're asking. Don't uproot the branches and the leaves. Don't take away our oxygen. Uh, um, the legacy of my grandparents and their grandparents and our parents. We're speaking of, uh, uh, of hundreds of people. That's all we're saying. We're speaking of a legacy. Allow us to still have oxygen. Thank you so much for the time. Next speaker is Charles Thard, followed by Delani Spencer. Good evening, everyone. Um, with my time, I, I just wanted to say a few words about what the Onetta Harris Community Center has meant to me in my life. And I, I think I echo the opinion of so many people in this room that I grew up with and that I grew up under. Uh, I grew up, a life, I'm a lifer in East Palo Alto, East Menlo Park. Uh, Oneta Harris Community Center was a life-changing experience for me. I entered the center at the ripe age of eight years old and had enjoyed over 30 years at the community center. Uh, I grew up with many of her grandchildren and, you know, up under a few of her children directly. Um, the center provided me a sense of social awareness that if I had not attended or, you know, gone to Onetta Harris Community Center literally every day of my childhood, I would not have that awareness. That awareness has allowed me to understand the importance of becoming a public servant I'm a 16-year uh, veteran at, with the San Mateo County Human Services Agency. I have been a coach and mentor for over 20 years and continue to do that work to this day. And much of that understanding of how important that is came from the Onetta Harris Community Center and the people I grew up under and was exposed to. Uh, like I said, in, in closing, Bonetta Harris taught me what it is to be a public servant in her, in her shadow. So much so that at the begin, just before COVID hit, I had the opportunity to do an annual event I call the Legacy Celebration, where I presented an award to the Harris family as well as the Barber family, who, whose father and grandfather ran the Boys and Girls Club in East Menlo Park for 40 years. That's my time. Our next speaker is Delani Spencer, followed by Gail Williams Dixon. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to speak on keeping the name as is because, as my fellow brother spoke on, it was a place for us to uh, develop relationships 
become a family because I was a very shy individual coming up and then going to this community center. It helped me develop more, uh, be more outspoken and be uh, more open to the people around me instead of being so shy. And with Charles being one of the main ones that helped me early on, it helped me become more of a volunteer in my community. I wind up being a volunteer coach there at the Y in East Palo Alto, in East Palo Alto. Um, and just been part of this community for over 20 years. I actually was an employee for the city of Menlo Park for over 10 years. And it has always been a part of me and in my heart to make this place be beautiful and be something that we can always look back on and not be something that um, I can talk to my kids about and be like, it used to be this or used to be that. It can be something that's continuous with the family, with the uh, culture that was already developed. So I want to say just thank you. And that's my time. Thank you. So next is Gail Williams Dixon, followed by Claudia L.L. Good evening, everyone. It's Gail Wilkerson Dixon, Onetta Dixon Harris. I'm her niece in law, I was married to her nephew. Uh, I like to say also, I'm in possession of her great nephews and her nieces, great, great. I, what am I going to tell them? What did you say, Mom? Or oh, what did you say, Grandma? You lived there all that time. You watched the evolution where there was two lanes, north, south, 101. And uh, what, did, what did you say? Um, you sat there. You sat there when Mellow Park took Bell Haven. I like Bell Haven, Mr. Bell Haven Realty. He, he, he sold his little hiney off making $600 a house back then. That was, I guess it was a lot of money. But uh, I look at the evolution, even the school district, I was bounced back and forth. Menlo Atherton, Ravenswood, they move our district, move it in a line. We had to cross over 101. That's when it expanded. And um, what else are they going to erase? Uh, we have to have something there. We put in the time. I mean, thank you, Menlo Park, for coming in and incorporating us and giving us sidewalks and where it didn't flood uh, so you could get a tax base from Meta. So um, I, I, I think that um, it would be inappropriate and you, you should have, go to sleep at night worrying about this. We erase those black people off the face of the earth. That's what I see, getting pushed further back, further back. And Onetta Harris, uh, I just love the conversation she had with, with my husband. Uh, she was the best. That's all I have to say. You'll be erasing, well, killing them. I'm... I don't want to say my age, but they said when you uh, a old person dies, you lose a library. And she was more than that. And because I take from her. OK, thank, thank you. you. Our next speaker is Claudia L.L., followed by Julie Shanson. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. My name is Claudia. And I was born and raised in East Menlo Park. Professionally, I've worked in politics and the world of public policy for over 15 years um, for this exact same reason, in fact. I'm a product of hardworking immigrant parents who raised me in my beautiful hometown. Um, Onetta Harris is our community icon. The city of Menlo Park, um, as we all have spoken today, um, quite frankly, didn't care about us in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and the 90s. But once you know, we we bonded together, we we stuck together as a community, right? Um, as a kid in the 90s, it was clear that the Onetta Harris family was a force. Uh, they had all of our backs. They would turn to the kids and ensure that they would have a, a bright future. So as I talk to you today, and I know I have a minute left, I, I'd like all of, you know, the council 
um, to really reflect on the fact that as kids in Menlo Park, we didn't have an opportunity to excel. You know, we we had crime, drugs, we had safety issues. Many of our community members have spoken about that. Um, and, and we ha had to figure it out together. Um, the Oneta Harris and the family, in fact, were some of the most, I would say, loving and powerful humans we've met. My parents actually still talk about them and say, remember the Harris family. So I know um, uh, some of us some of us got real lucky. We beat the odds. Some of us, you know, got lucky. We went to college and some of us have become elected officials and others have become um, those who staff the electeds. So I ask you, mayor and city council, um, to really be on the side of the community. Um, I urge you to stand and vote on Oneta Harris Community Center and keep it as is. Um, if the community is talking loud and clear, I think there's a message there. And so I urge you to, to stand next to us. Um, have a great afternoon and thank you for the time. Our next speaker will be Julie Shanson, followed by S.T. Webster. Hi there. Um, Good evening, everybody. I think this has been a very spirited discussion, and I've heard a lot that I heard at the last time that this was raised in an open meeting. Um, as a white person from the other side of the tracks between Middlefield and 101, I feel strongly um, about keeping the history that we have in Menlo Park in every district. And so I appreciate all of the input that's been here. I appreciate Councilmember Nash and Councilmember Taylor. I'd like to remind you that the community center on Oneta that was formerly named for Oneta Harris was really the gym and some multi-purpose spaces. And that this new center has also a library, the youth development center, and a bunch of other stuff. So just for what it's worth. I'm personally excited that the pool is going to be open on the weekends year round. I think that is a wonderful step forward. Thank you very much for your time. Our next speaker is S.T. Webster, followed by Kenneth Harris. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, S.T. Webster, we're not able to hear your audio. Oh, okay. Yes, my name. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? No, that your audio is fading in and out quite badly. Um, oh, okay. Don't mind, let me go to Kenneth Harris and then I'll return to you, okay? Excuse me, City Clerk Heron? Yes, Mayor Willis. Thank you. Um, so um, I originally said that we would end the call for public comment and I believe the next speaker was our original final public speaker. Since then, I have seen um, that there are more people wanting to speak, and I don't see any reason to not reopen public comment. So I'm going to be reopening public comment at this time. So this is now the final call to get your cards in and to raise your hand for public comment. And um, I'll let City Clerk Karen announce who the last public comment speaker will now be. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Willis. And I'm gonna give this a few more seconds. So again, this is the final, final call for public comment on J1. I mean, just one moment to make sure I am capturing all of our speakers. Okay. 
right, so our last speaker is queued up as number 25, and that will be Terry Harris. So at Thank this time, you. we're going to close the public comment for item J1 and take um, all speakers who have had their hand raised or submitted a card. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, City Clerk Karen. Yes, thank Please you, Tyson. Okay, so I'd actually like to return to St. Webster to see if we were able to get a better audio. Hello, can you hear me? It's kind Hello? of fading. Can you hear me? The audio we're hearing is kind of going in and out. Is this better? Yes, have her proceed, please. Okay, so yes, please uh, go ahead and proceed with your comment. Hello, thank you for this opportunity to speak and demonstrate my support for keeping the Oneta Harris Center name. It is our responsibility for future generations to know and remember the history of honoring Mrs. Oneta Harris, a resident, a resident, wife, mother of eight, plus an active community advocate for Menlo Park, East Palo Alto, and the surrounding communities. When I visit the Oneta Harris Center, it reminds me of my own mother, Mrs. Emma Webster. Mrs. Harris' name represents the contributions of all mothers in all families and in every community. Ma'am, ma'am, we we are unable to hear you. Oh wow. Okay, you still can't hear me. We can hear you. Just make sure that the phone is very close to your mouth. All right. Were you able to hear any of what I said previously? We heard most of what you said, but it sounds like you're moving away from the phone. All right, is this better? Is there another microphone or phone you can speak into? Tell me what you want me to do. Sorry, we, we cannot hear you. We did hear that you were expressing support for the Oneta Harris name um, and for keeping that name. Okay. I'm so at this time, I'm going to go to our next speaker, which will be Kenneth Harris, followed by James E. Dixon. Kenneth, you should be able to unmute your end. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Kenneth Harris. Um, I'm here to speak in behalf of keeping the name the Oneta Harris Community Center intact because of the spirit that Oneta Harris represented. You see, what happened, what has happened historically is uh, minorities have built things, have, th have buildings and other things named after them. Cities were torn down. And we were always on shaky grounds as far as others were concerned. But our spirit continued to be a sense of community, a sense of responsibility, and a sense of duty to the community. It, it, in, in a sense, it's, it's more about a legacy and a history. You see, we as African-Americans and minorities 
don't have a lot of places we can go and we can congregate and we can recreate and we can just have a safe haven where we can be in peace. And one of these safe havens was the Onetta Harris Community Center where we could go, congregate and recreate. When you pull that out of the puzzle, you know, it disenfranchises us. 30 seconds. And that spirit needs to remain intact. The Onetta Harris Community Center, as it was written, as it was established, and it was, it was duly appointed in 1983. For the, for the sake of the community, for the sake of all of us who work and play and live in the community. So we need to keep that name intact for all the reasons that I've mentioned. Thank you for letting me speak. Our next speaker is James E. Dixon, followed by Elizabeth Jackson. You hear me? Yes, go right ahead, James. Yeah, um, Onetta Harris, who is my aunt, and uh, I want to speak to a couple things. One's about her and the things she did to get that community through the late 60s and 70s. Um, she was a wonderful woman. There was a lot of murders and drug dealing and problems in that city long before, you know, a Menlo Park police officer would show we would have to wait for a sheriff to show up. But my aunt would be there before any of those, you know, at a murder scene to console the families and and just help out the best she could. I used to ride my bike down Bay Road and down Newbridge, you know, and go over to Chilcota Terminal and go down to the community center and I would be chased by drug dealers and all kinds of bad people. But the second I hit that turn at the end of the terminal and got on that piece of property, I knew I was safe because it was Onetta Harris's property. She looked at it that way, even though it wasn't. But it was, everyone knew you were safe in that property, whether, whether you were playing basketball in the gym or out on the baseball field or anywhere there. Onetta Harris was looking out for you. So it's more than just a building. It's that place that yes. resonates yes. with my generation that saw so much in that time period. And Onetta Harris' name should remain at that gate. And that's what I have to say. And it is what it is, but my heart's with that. And I cede my time. Thank you. So our next speaker is Elizabeth Jackson, followed by Valerie Faulkner. Council members, Elizabeth Jackson, I um, wanted to support Ms. Harrison's name and I think uh, it would be very appropriate to keep her name alive because she's done so much for the community. She was a role model. She um, worked for people in East Palo Alto. And I used to live in Menlo Park, but I'm from East Palo Alto right now. And I'm speaking up for her because I feel like that she was a good neighbor. And I think we should all be a good neighbor once people, her, uh, did all of this work. This is a lot of work she did. And people, and as you see, young people she helped, they still remember her. It's not like she forgot her. And I don't think you for, should forget her as well. I'm looking over here at 40 names over there, 40 pictures. Now you don't have them there for nothing. These people served your community well, and so did she. And you've heard all these people saying that. That means something to them, just like all 40 of those people on that wall mean to your community. And so I urge you to support her, keep her name here. We don't need strangers' name. The community need to know people they know, not corporate people and strangers. 
you know they know who she is they can pass her name and her work along to the other to the future young people So our next speaker is Valerie Faulkner, followed by Alessandra Harris. And Valerie was an in-person speaker. Okay, thank you for clarifying. I appreciate that, Valerie. So then we will go to Alessandra Harris, followed by Marilyn. Hello, um, I'm here tonight asking you all to adopt the recommendation from the Library Commission and the Planning Commission. Um, I took a picture at the last meeting. They recommended the name Oneta Harris Community Campus or Oneta Harris Community Campus at Belhaven. And this wasn't done um, based on their personal opinion. This was done after hundreds of comments um, of people talking about what an impact Oneta Harris had on their lives. And um, this isn't about keeping one woman's name on the community campus. This is, um, this is talking about everyone in the community who's been touched with her feels like they are Oneta Harris. And that when we say keep the name Oneta Harris, we're talking about keeping the legacy of all the black people who live there. And we're talking about keeping the legacy of everyone who lives with her spirit so that people who come for generations will see that name and remember who she was and the community that lived there. Thank you. And our next speaker will she be- She has 48 seconds. She has 48 seconds left. And that was beautiful. That was beautiful because that was my so, sentiments. Okay, so the sorry, the, thank you. Once yeah, you use it, you lose it. Sorry. Okay. So we but, heard from you. And sure. Everyone, that was my sentiments. Thank you, sir. The metaphoric of a tree sir. of the city of Menlo Park. Yeah. Metaphorically, she's that root of all of us being branches okay, and sir. limbs. Throughout the whole city. Bell, it is one wonderful. opportunity for speaker. Thank you. Thank you. We know this is a very passionate group and a, an emotional topic. Um, we are listening to every word. Sometimes fewer words have a bigger impact. Um, and we appreciate, we know there's a lot of feelings that you want to express um, in hearing these comments. Um, we appreciate you keeping this environment safe for all people to uh, express what they need to, to say. Thank you. City Clerk Karen. Okay, so our next speaker will be Marilyn, followed by Rona Edgerton Harris. Uh, good evening. My name is Marilyn DeRowan, and I grew up on the 1300 block of Madeira. And it's really sad that we're back here again. Um, like the young lady just spoke, um, there was a commission that you guys put together and they selected two names. So evidently you guys aren't paying attention to that. And that was a waste of people's time because you made up your mind or whatever. Uh, the young lady, Miss Taylor, you mentioned somebody named uh, Stanford or whatever. I've never heard of her. And I grew up in that community. I was two years old when my parents bought that house. So in 1956, they bought that home. Um, Mrs. Harris did so much for that community. Uh, Meta, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, or anybody else, I've never heard their name of everything that uh, Mrs. Harris did, nobody. And she was the voice of the voiceless. My mother was a very quiet woman and would not have dared to go speak in front of the city council. Mrs. Harris was the advocate for that community, uh, an orchestrated black community. Those black soldiers came here from the South. And when they were in Hunters Point, they, uh, realtors from Mellow Park, they knew those black military soldiers had to buy homes. That's what the that's what East Mellow Park represents. Black soldiers from the South who had GI bills to buy homes. Our parents paid taxes there. Um, you talk about a picture on the wall. I heard somebody say the picture. Mrs. Harris's picture needs to be on the walls of the city of Menlo Park because of what she did in that community. 
If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have had the things that we had, a teen center, other opportunities, free uh, day camp at, at Flood Park. You know, um, I, I'm just so angry at myself that I didn't contact uh, Al Sharpton to get involved with this. And I think that's what I'm going to do because I'm not one to just sit back and watch this kind of stuff happen without something being done about it. I will be writing a letter to him tomorrow because somebody needs to come to the city of Menlo Park and really advocate for Mrs. Harris. Her Thank family you. is here, her grandchildren. We're all here. We grew up there. We know what it meant to have Mrs. Harris in that community. And I'm very upset that you guys have had a commission. Ma'am, ma'am, please thank right you for your comment. Our next speaker is Rona Edgerton Harris, followed by Tion Bejama. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Yes, I'd, I'd like to donate my time to Kenneth Harris. Um, can you repeat who you're donating to? Yes. Kenneth Harris. Kenneth Harris has already spoken. Did you want to use your phone? Okay, I will. Okay. So I, I just want to start. Uh, good evening to everyone there present and on Zoom. And, um, you know, in sitting, I know that the, the Parks and Recreation and the uh, Library Commission, commissioners submitted the names as requested. And ironically, all three names that were chosen were Onetta Harris Community Campus, Onetta Harris Community Campus of Bell Haven. That's a resounding yes to keep the name Onetta Harris Community Campus. I'm a little uh, disappointed that we've had to come to so many meetings, and we do. We talk about the same issue every time about the naming of Anetta Harris, but it's very important. As I said earlier, uh, a few meetings ago, there was a picture of Mrs. Harris that was placed among, excuse me, placed amongst the, the staplers, the scissors, and the young man that was orchestrating the giveaway there was a big picture of Onetta Harris and he didn't know who she was. And that's why it's important that the history stays with the center. Onetta Hart, uh, excuse me, Onetta Harris was a tireless worker for the community, for us, and she did carry us in her suitcase. She did bring us all along. And my vote is to keep the center. I am in support of keeping the center Secondary. named after Onetta Harris Community Center. I don't think the building should be built and, and a name not displayed. Who does that? So I'm not in agreement with that. I'm one vote, but there's a lot of other voters who do want to see the name Onetta Harris remain on the building for the legacy, for the history. Thank you. Our next speaker is Tiombe Jama, followed by Israel Harris with donated time from Frederick Harris. Good evening. Um, my name is Tiombe Jama, also Constance, and I'm with the organization um, Blacks <clears throat> Advocating for spaces and resources. As everyone knows, we are losing them. They're being taken away. So this is a history lesson. Um, and I, it's straight up, the, I don't even know why we're here again, because they said you were gonna change the name. That's what was said. So what are we doing? It's called being peed on and called le lemonade. So at any rate, the um, history lesson is there are two different cultures going on here. I am because we are. That's the way Mrs. Harris pushed it on down. She, you know, she continued to go down, so all these people are here. I am because we are. We had a, 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 a legacy. She has a legacy. So many other people that were like her. That's how we survived. And we should continue and keep her name. But you've heard that from so many people. I don't know why. 
you didn't just say we're going to agree with the um, omissions that and, and hopefully not waste our time. Um, that would be a shame if you did that. That would really be ridiculous. Um, so I want to talk. Well, I only have 36 seconds. I really want to talk about her legacy. So I didn't know her. I knew of her, and I knew that the, it was it was um, the it was welcome. We we were welcome there, not at the other place. We were welcome there. So my grandson, who is now twenty four, and my um, he, he was so excited. He learned how to do the jump off the um, diving board here. Then they took that away. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Then my fourteen year old, she learned uh, um, how to um, flip underwater. When she was walking home, she says, Grammy, I'm happy. And that was because of the experience and the welcoming that she felt there. And we need to keep the legacy, you know, keep the people that came behind her and, and make people our, our people feel welcome. Thank you. Israel Harris with donated time from Frederick Harris, followed by Joseph Johnson. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Uh, I've been here many times, so I kind of feel I feel very comfortable in front of you guys after all of these uh, meetings. Uh, first, wanted to thank Councilwoman Taylor for allowing allowing me to be a part of the subcommittee back in 2019, 2020. It's very interesting because I didn't really come um, looking to for anything in particular other than to understand the process. Uh, I've learned a lot and. I learned that words matter. And some of the words that are used here today are very interesting, like divisive, uh, contentious, safe space. Uh, when I noticed that most of the time, if there's a debate in which someone actually respects the other person and doesn't feel as though, you know, it's their way or the highway, those words aren't used as much. They could just be a debate. And you use the word safe space earlier. I don't see any problems here. So I think we need to change our verbiage for how we speak to each other. Um, the reason I say that is because uh, I was on that subcommittee and uh, I had people who didn't create a safe space. I had people from the community who I just wanted to learn from and were saying bad things about my grandmother, which had nothing to do with the community. It had to do with personal want from someone. I didn't go in saying, hey, it needs to be named after her. I wanted honesty in the program, in the process. So my recommendation was to remove the recommendation of a name from that subcommittee because it was not under an honorable intentions. So then we moved to having the commission be involved and then said, okay, well, let's learn from the community and understand what they want. What I noticed is that it doesn't matter if it's 95% that are for something, it's if the 5% are connected to someone who has power in the community, that's all that matters. Because I listen to many people from the community who I do know or, and I don't know, say they were in favor of the name, the entire facility, because when they Googled it, as the commission said, when they, the terms that were made for the entire facility from their past history was that of the Oneta Harris Community Center. I didn't come up with that. Thank you. I did not want to uh, taint anyone's opinion. I was there to learn from others. So I, I learned that from the commission. That's what they said to me. But, you know, I noticed that there's strategy that's involved with when you present information. You know, you can present it now today as, hey, I'd like it to be named Jesse O'Neill Harris Community Center because it works today. But people have been here for tens, 20, you know, 10 or 20 plus meetings. And we have all, uh, there has been 95% in favor of one direction. But what I see is that from the community of Menlo Park citizens even, and that does not really matter Thank in the process. You. One other thing I wanted to say is that, because I've been at, at a lot of these meetings, I feel as though I garner more respect to say everything that I've seen over these four years. You know, I've seen people talk out of turn, uh, Council, Council Member Combs, when, about this process when it was a timely time to do that, to change the process for gathering the name. I thought that was very strategic, very smart of him to do that. But I see that after doing all of these things, the same names that I kind of knew were going to happen anyways four years ago are happening today. We can say there's no name on there until everyone in this room leaves. And then what you can do is you can name whatever you want them. 
So that's what I'm saying is that just be upfront with these things. We wouldn't have wasted our time, but I have learned a lot. So I appreciate understanding how business works. So thank, thank you. you for that. Our next speaker is Joseph Johnson, followed by Denise Berman. You know, integrity is important, you know, and you people are supposed to be representing the community. Now, there was a commission that recommended a name. That was the process. So apparently, it sounds to me that you guys' names, your, your decisions was already made up. So was this a bogus process, you know? I mean, is this thing behind money, you know? I mean, was it, was it, what was it was it going to take us? I mean, what kind of community are we living in? I mean, look at the Supreme Court, man. They're on the take, you know? They're getting money from all these rich people, you know? <laughs> and now, here we are in this the position now. We can help the people. We're not helping people. This, America's, look, look where we're going. Do you see what we're doing? And you're participating in it, you know? That's not fair, you know? The process. Do we have to go to the law? I mean, is the Constitution mean anything in here? Huh? What a process you run in here, you know? This is bogus, you know? This is not right, you know? Well, you guys, you already know what you're gonna do, right? You already made a decision. Am I right or wrong? No comment? Sir, we're hearing your comment. We will be responding in our deliberation. Right, but I mean, from the beginning, it seems like she kind of like spearheaded it you know, so you put her up front, you know, and I can understand where you're coming from. Are you on the take? Huh? I mean, what, what is this all about? Huh? Please refrain from personal attack. Well, is y'all on the take? You know, that's not fair. Yeah. 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 Our next speaker is Denise Berman, followed by Yasmin Abdusami Oakley. Good evening. My name is Denise Berman, and I'm a longtime resident of East Menlo Park and a registered voter. Um, I'm here to say that I'm 100% for keeping the Oneta Harris name on our beautiful community center. Oneta Harris was an activist a wonderful spirit and an inspiration to our community. And in a time when our history, and I'm talking about black people of color history is always in jeopardy of being erased. I urge the council to be on the right side of history and on the right side of what our community wants in keeping the Oneta Harris name. Thank you. Our next speaker is Yasmin Yasmin Abdusami Oakley, followed by Terry Harris. Good evening. My name is Yasmin Abdusami Oakley. Um, I was tuning into the beginning of the meeting or before public comment when you said that Onetta Harris would be the name of the community center, but the overall name would be the Bellhaven multi-generational community campus. And I would like to see the name be the Onetta Harris multi-generational community campus, keeping her name at the overall forefront. Um, I do not think it's anything wrong with um, continuing the name that is has garnered so much community support um, and not hiding that name. Uh, this is a world-class name. This is a world-class center um, that has trained a lot of professional athletes that are um, in the limelight now. So all of the athletes that come from East Palo Alto, Menlo Park area, um, have trained at the Oneta Harris Center in their youth and um, before they were professionals. So I don't understand why uh, we can't keep the name, um, the overall name. This is what the community wants. And this is what we've been to all these meetings, taking all this time out of our lives and schedules to demonstrate that um, this is what we want. So um, I would 
I, I uh, we don't need Bill Haven on everything. Bill Haven is a is a great name, but um, the heart and soul of East Menlo Park is the Onetta Harris Center, and it should remain the name Onetta Harris Multi Generational Community Campus. Thank you. And our final speaker will be Terry Harris. Terry, you should be able to unmute your end at this time. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you for having me. I would just like to thank everyone for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, this process has been so impressive to me. It, takes me back to the time when my mother passed away and um, the day of her funeral. I had so many different things going through my mind in terms of appreciation, if the community had really appreciated who my mother was, what she represented and what she gave up for her own family. Not that she didn't take very good care of her family, but to hear the community outpour at this time, it just brings back so many great positive memories for me. And I really think in this process that the city of Menlo Park will make the right decision in keeping the name of Onetta Harris. I could not believe the outpour at her funeral of individuals that were coming up to me and other family members not knowing that she had actually passed away and we were even family members of hers. And so I'm just saying to all, and especially to the community of the outpouring respect and appreciation that my mother gave to this community. Thank you. That does conclude the speakers at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much, City Clerk Karen. Um, so I think what we're gonna do now is take a short break. Um, we will return um, to hear the council deliberation on this item at 7.55. So we're gonna take an eight minute break and then we'll return for the discussion at 7.55, thank you.
Having our city council back at our in-person days. Mayor Willison, you may reconvene the meeting. All right. Um, thank you everyone for that break. It's always good to get our blood flowing before we have a conversation up here. Um, I first just wanted to, um, before we get kicking off, um, make sure everyone is aware of the California Brown Act. And it's a state law that um, governs how the city council must conduct its business. Um, one of the components of it is that all of our decision-making must be done under the public's eye. So um, there are five members on our council, only two members, so less than a majority, are allowed to speak on any given item outside of public meetings. Um, so that means that the subcommittee made up of Vice Mayor Taylor and Council Member Nash know what each other thinks, but nobody else know, knew what they thought until we heard it live, just like everyone um, here tonight. Um, and then there's three of us left. It's possible that two of us um, might have discussed this item, but there's never a decision made ahead of time, which would require three votes outside of the public's view. So I just wanted to set that stage going into this because um, I have been watching, I've watched all of the parks and rec and library meetings and all, all these meetings. And there seems to be some confusion about whether the council had made a decision already. And um, that would have been in a public forum and you would have seen that. So um, you're about to hear our actual conversations with each other live on the dais. And we're gonna be learning where each other um, is along with all of you um, here tonight. So with that, um, it's now the council's time to speak. So members of the public, um, thank you very much for your comments. I hope you found us um, listening intently. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. We've already heard from Council Member Nash and Vice Mayor Taylor. Um, Council Member Combs, would you like to kick us off? Um, <laughs> would I like to kick us off? I um, uh, First, I want to say with complete transparency and connection with the, the Brown Act, I have actually talked to no one uh, on, on council about about um, where I'm at, and I'm not sure where I'm at on, on this matter, just um, in, in the same vein of, of, of you sharing out about, um, <clears throat> about the, uh, the, the, the Brown Act. Is, is it possible to put the subcommittee's um, recommendations on, on screen? I, I think that they were at some point, is it possible to put them back up? And just so I'm clear, since we we're coming out of uh, public comment, these still remain the subcommittee's recommendations. Okay, all right, so, so. okay, all right, okay, totally fair. And so um, I, I am supportive of where the subcommittee is at. There seems, uh, with regards to the the sort of uh, subparts of of the larger center, um, it, this does leave this this question though, where it seems like the the um, the subcommittee has not landed on a specific recommendation, and that is as it relates to the overall name um, of of the campus, and and that there are three options there. And so I do, I do want to understand, and so I know it's my comment period, but I have some questions. Um, as it relates to the leaving unnamed, that option, um, it would be great to get some like details of what there be like a working name or acronym that we would use if it's left officially unnamed and what leaving an unnamed um, trigger a decision or discussion about naming at some date in the future, or, or would that be open ended? My guess to the second question is yes, it 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 would because I'm I'm sure the goal um, would be to have the the campus named, and I know that that was a part of the request from the staff. Um, partly, and I think Wayfinders, which for me isn't a significant reason to have a name, is because of Wayfinders. 
Um, everyone knows um, where the campus is. Um, I don't think that that is an issue. Um, and as far as the first part of your question, um, for me, it was, it had more to do about, and, and I know that there is probably a, um, not an agreement as far as out of 100% of the people, 95% want the name to remain what it, the original campus was and 5% didn't. I don't know if that number is actually true. Mm -hmm. um, what I am trying to do is actually look at, at a later date, what that what that is. Maybe it is the same, maybe it isn't, I don't know. I just know that based on what I've heard and then listened to in the commission meetings, and normally, and I'll say this directly to the public and to the, the city council, is that I have been outvoted on several issues that I have fought for um, since I've been on council. So now I'm not afraid to be the only one to say, no, I don't support it. So at this time, I don't support putting the name on the building. I just don't. Bellhaven, the Bellhaven community encompasses more than just one person who did significant work for the community. And the timeline between 1983 and 2023, I, there are countless people that haven't even been mentioned in this space. And just so, and I believe that we all have realized this, but probably it just hasn't been brought up in conversation in public, is that the amount of information that we've learned because of this discussion about the community members, especially Mrs. Onetta Harris, has been more than what was ever documented inside of that original building. There was no biography up. There was no education about who she was in that building. There was absolutely nothing. But now we know. So now it needs to be documented and put into a curriculum as opposed to just talking about it. So, and I know you didn't ask me that, but um, <laughs> this, this is what, the reason why I'm just like, I, I'm okay with the building not having a name. I don't believe that a waves finder should be the reason why we say that's the name there. I just don't. So I'm okay with the building not having a name and then all of the existing services remaining the names that they already have. Wait, but that, and I just want to make sure, but that we will or won't, re you're okay with the building not having a name for the moment or for like the foreseeable future? Or do you do see us revisiting this issue? At I, I see it being re revisited okay, okay. because I'm sure that other folks on council and the public want a name on the building. Okay, t t totally, t totally fair. Um, or, all right. Like I said, I I think I can be supportive, interested to see where other other colleagues are, of of the overall recommendations from, the um the 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 the, the subcommittee uh and and as it relates to the issue where um there's not a clear recommendation from the subcommittee, um I I, I think all, all of those. Uh, options would would be some I could see supporting, um, depending on on where the rest of the council is. I think my name was was mentioned in connection with this, and I don't quite know if I got like to be honest the the context. I mean, for complete transparency, like again, Menlo Park is is in districts. I I represent District Two, um, which is not where uh, this new campus is. Um, is, is located and and I have not seen myself playing um, an active role in, in this discussion. I, members of the community have reached out to me to discuss this and and I have been open to hearing what they have said and I've gotten all of the the sentiment expressed here in those discussions and all of the sentiment expressed in the emails that 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 we have seen. And the only thing that I've ever said, about this is that as I've seen it from Menlo Park, that this was a discussion being had um, mostly amongst the members in in the community surrounding uh, the, the the community center, and that 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 I didn't have a scenario where there were people. I'll be frank, I represent the Willows, who were calling me or emailing me saying like I have a very specific like stance on what uh, the community campus should be named. That just didn't happen. Those people who did were the people who reached out to me um, to advocate where they were, were the people in that community. And, and that's the only thing that I have ever said in this council meeting when someone suggested that it was people from outside of the community that ha were, taking, were, were taking a specific position. Um, and I was just saying, that's not what I've seen. 
and 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 that was the only thing. Other than that, I I have uh, I've been open to hearing um, that discussion. I will say that it has been uh, disappointing because um, and not disappointing for many members. I think people have a right to um, you know advocate for the position that they um, that they have very vigorously, and and I think and support um, and have loved to see the advocacy from the Harris family. Um, I would be doing the same thing, I think, if, if I were, were in your shoes. So I've, I've never had um, an issue with that. But again, what I've said is that this has been a discussion amongst um, that community, among the community surrounding um, the, 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 cam the campus. And it has not been something that I have seen where lots of other people um, outside of that community have wanted to say, um, have, have wanted to sort of exert their will on that. I, I will also want, um, just point out um, before passing along that I, do, I don't want to lose sight at the end of the day that what we're going to get uh, is a $30, $40 million um, campus of, of, of w which is, I, I think, like uh, unrivaled um, uh, along, along the peninsula. And it is not something um, that really existed as, as, as all that viable not too long ago. I remember when I got on campus and when I first uh, got involved, the idea was was where could we find some place to put a new library, and that the library uh, in the community was small, it was connected to the school, and and that was an issue that we really needed to address. And to that point, what we were looking at is something that was going to be whether it was located on Little Road or whether it was located on this campus, it was going to be fairly modest. Um, and what we're going to get in a few months is something that was never envisioned um, in the in anyone's wildest dreams when I became involved in this community. And so I would just like like to reiterate, as we have this discussion at the end of the day, we're going to have this amazing community asset. Um, and and I, I hope that that is something that we can all celebrate and be proud of. Thank you, Councilmember Combs. Councilmember Dort. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the subcommittee for sharing. And thank you so much to members of the public for your thoughtful comments today and over the last year and longer than that. I know I've only been a part of this process for the last 10 months, but I have learned so much uh, from everyone who has contributed and I'm grateful for that. Um, somewhat similar to council member Combs, a goal of mine during this process has been to listen to the emails we've received to the commission meetings and the public meetings that have happened and to all the public hearings, you know, the, the public comments at these meetings, even when it hasn't been on our agenda. Um, and in my goal of listening, the thing, the thing that I keep hearing uh, is the community speaking loud and clear about priorities they have and, and hopes they have of, of seeing how the name uh, reflects a, a important leader and legacy in our community. And I've also heard folks speak about how this is, is more than just a building or more than just the programming that used to be there and that this is more uh, than just one woman. We're talking about this legacy um, and this model of civic and community leadership that Onita Harris was. And so understanding that conversation and the feedback that I, I'm hearing um, today, I, I am a bit confused and curious to learn more from the subcommittee about the choice to not have the overall name uh, carried over and refl or, you know, reflected here. Because um, I also deeply respect Vice, Vice Mayor Taylor, your leadership here and the other conversations that you're having that uh, I don't see at the commission meetings and I don't see um, from what has come forward in these conversations. And so I, I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm curious for more, for more understanding about um, the choice to to reserve that name to the one program or the, the recreation center. Um, and I'm, I'm curious if there's any more insight there to help me understand where this is. Oh, yes. Thank you. What the idea is really um, there has, we are leaving the names the same. There has never been an overall name on this community center. Um, it has always been the Bellhaven Pool, the Bellhaven, it was the Bellhaven Branch Library. We're suggesting the Bellhaven Library. 
you know, the Harris Community Center, which was the recreation center, um, the Menlo Park Senior Program, and the Bellhaven Youth Center. Um, each of those were individual names, and that is what we are recommending to carry forward. The reason why we weren't, um, why we were leaving it unnamed, is we really were um, partly it highlights each of those centers to leave the overall building unnamed. It really highlights each of those pieces and allows each to um, sort of have a little bit more of a um, visibility. And it um, does give us an opportunity at some future point to name the whole center if that's the direction that we wanted to go. Um, the idea is not in any way to continue this discussion for a longer period of time. I think that um, the community, everyone has been very um, gracious, giving us their time, telling us about the legacy. We do not need to continue that. The idea would be um, perhaps once we get the, be able to focus on the programming, getting up the um, staffing, um, getting all the building built and all the pieces together. And then in quite a future, not like within the next year or so, um, several years um, at some point when we really have the program up and running to be able to make a decision as to what would a future uh, name for the overall campus be, or do we want to leave it where it really is um, highlighting each of the individual pieces. And I see the council member, or Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you, council member Nash. The, the other piece is um, one of the recommendations that council member Nash and I had is to have a, a documentary with all of the information that has been learned in this process that needs to be um, put in some place where it is included into the history um, specifically in the campus itself, but also having something that can be, um, whether it is a, a documentary, a film, something where we have more of our contributions, and that is for all residents that contributed um, to build the Bellhaven community to be included, to just figure out ways to be inclusive. That is my biggest concern, is that we're focused on one thing when there is a larger community um, and folks who haven't been recognized um, that we still need to learn history on. There's even work, and I think that there was something posted on CCIN, um, information about how many different people ran for office from the Bellhaven community and how long it took to get somebody in office. Um, just, there's a lot of information out there that I think needs to be, um, that needs to be learned about, it needs to be documented and it needs to be shared. And to me, that is where our legacy is. That is what we need to be um, putting our time and effort into along with the programming. If no one knew who she was, and people still say that, and that's just not knowing one person that is popular to a lot of folks. So how many others? Just one more piece. We do definitely want to celebrate Ms. Harris. Um, one of the ideas is that we are got um, Oneta Harris Community Center is an actual name that is there. It is not just a picture on the wall, although everyone there has, um, is also getting recognition. This is above and beyond. Also with the documentary, we are really trying to highlight Ms. Harris's life as well as other people's um, who are contributing in the whole community there, um, which has yes. um, had a very rich history and continues to have a rich history, which we would like to have um, documented as part of it and to have that part of the center. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Thank you both so much for sharing. Um, one or two, two other notes from me, um, thinking about not naming the overall building. Um, to me, you know, if something was somewhere, it's taken away and then there's a new something there, colloquially, it will be known as the I'm guessing from a lot of folks in the community as the Oneta Harris Community Campus or Community Center. And so if by not naming it, we're inviting the colloquial, you can have the name that it, uh, the center previously had, 
that part of not just saying like, okay, given that that is the name that was previously at this place. Um, okay, I understand that it wasn't the previous, but it's the previous location of where the old building was, right? It is the previous location of four of the five components that are going back there. So it was the Annetta Harris Community Center. It was the Bellhaven Senior Center. Okay. It was the Youth Center. It was the pool. Um, so there was never one name for the entire center. I think colloquially, yes, it was um, called certainly Sam Trans. Um, many places do refer to the old site as the Oneta Harris Community Center, but it was never officially, um, there, were, there were four different components there. Thank you for that, that context, I appreciate it. Gracias por ese contexto, lo agradezco. Mary is flustered, but complies and does her best. Paul later tells her she should have received. Apologies, um, it was our interpretation services. Thank you. Please continue. Um, and one other note that I'm curious for is this this idea of maintaining the name of the program um, versus the name of the building. Uh, I'm curious if the subcommittee could speak to how that conversation was shared with the public and shared with the community that's been giving input here? Or, and if that distinction of carrying on the name of the program versus na naming of a new building was discussed, um, because I think a lot of the feedback we we've received from the dais is that folks want to see the Onetta Harris name continued. And I'm I, there's a distinction here in, in what is being recommended and what um, could be interpreted as recommended, and I, I would appreciate clarity there. I mean, honestly, I would agree with that comment. Um, we definitely are continuing the Aneta Harris Community Center name. Um, it is not on the whole building, just as it wasn't before. Um, so the, some people have definitely um, specifically said they would like it on the whole building. Many people just have been um, voicing the desire to have it continue, which we definitely, I don't think that has been ever, we've always had the name itself continuing as it was. I think, um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. And I know so much thought has gone into this. And so I, I do appreciate your willingness to answer my questions. And I'm curious if there's other questions or comments on the desk. Vice Mayor Taylor, would you like to say something? I'm not sure if it'll be helpful for staff to put up a picture of the front of the building, the, the actual picture. I think it was in the staff report. Uh, yes, uh, just give me a moment. I get that on the screen. All right. Um, while that's going up, um, I appreciate all of the um, the comments, uh, especially the public comments, um, I want to thank everyone for their incredible patience in coming. And I want to acknowledge that I've seen you all. I've watched all of the meetings. I know you've come out again and again and again. And um, how hard that must be for everyone. And so I just want to thank you for your patience. Um, I want to thank the subcommittee for, I know you have been working tirelessly. I want to thank the staff. Um, I want to thank those um, who brought this project to the city, um, Rachel and Rose Vicker staff, um, Cheryl Bims um, and Meta. Um, I know there are a lot of people that care deeply about this project. And as uh, council member Combs said, at the end of the day, we're going to have um, a beautiful treasure for the community. Um, for me, this has been a very painful and troubling process to witness unfold. Um, and I see that it's, it's caused a lot of pain for a lot of people. Um, I also see that there's been almost, as someone not on the subcommittee and who has not been privy to anything that has not been in the public, um, it, there seems to be um, a kind of dual track on this process. There's um, a working group um, that I don't have 
any knowledge about really what goes on in those meetings. Um, and then there's been a public process and it's confusing to me those dual tracks, especially when they're yielding different results. Um, and I feel for members of the public and the community who came out time and time again, and um, especially those who went to all these commission meetings and to our commissioners. Um, I spoke to some of these commissioners. Those were very challenging meetings. Um, and um, to put the commissions through this and the community through this, um, and then to kind of not use that process in the end um, is, is something I'm really struggling with. Um, and so I, I, I don't know if that's a question or I don't know if you wanna to respond to how to, how to balance but that. I, I just like to respond because I, I found it that sort of framing troubling to not accept the recommendation of a commission or to go in a different direction, which we do all day long, does not negate the value of that process, um, does not suggest that somehow there is not legitimacy to that process. It At the end of the day, the decision was always going to be the council's decision. And, and with everything, whether it's the planning commission or the library commission um, or, or EQC, we take recommendations. There are recommending bodies. And so uh, I do think that like it is valid that in this scenario, there was the subcommittee and then there was this process by which um, this issue was taken through commissions, which is, is our normal process. For a variety of reasons, uh, a subcommittee was, was formed. Um, to also discuss some of the things that went through the commission, but also some things that didn't specifically go through those commissions. And, and so I, I, I just, I think it's, it's fine to say that like, um, that we're at this juncture and it could be that the council was going in a different direction than the, the last commission recommendation, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that that process was sam somehow, you, you know, false. I mean, this is how like democracy in a community works. Like, right, you have discussions, it goes to your elected leaders. And sometimes those things are things that you agree with is as with elections, and sometimes they they are not. Um, and that that I, I think that that's something that we I, I think, especially given all of the 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 attention here, I, I think we should be careful how how we frame what has been, I think, a, a robust process. <laughs> if anything, the criticism of Menlo Park is that our processes are so extensive um, and, and take too long. Um, so I acknowledge that our commissions are recommending bodies and I'm sure I have been, I don't know if the word's guilty of not listening to a commission recommendation. And I understand at the end of the day, the decision is always um, up to the council. Um, but I do think that there's been a, uh, a process and an expectation, I'll say. Um, we had a meeting about the process. Um, we, we had a lot of, I'm trying to understand then how the feedback from the surveys, from the commission meetings, from that public process informed the recommendation. Um, that that is coming out because it's to me it still feels like a disconnect and I just and I also know that Vice Mayor Taylor we all honor your leadership of District One and I I want so much to support your recommendation I'm struggling to under to understand it thank you thank you Mayor Wilson and and I appreciate your your honesty and in in something just going back to a question that you had asked earlier. Um, during this process of, of about four years that the subcommittee existed, um, the subcommittee originally had Councilmember Carlton and then Councilmember Nash came aboard. And I believe that the working group had not been created yet. So a lot of this process was, it was created along the way. And the goal of the working group, I, I said it in the, the my beginning statement, was to make sure that our voices were in the conversations that were not in public. And so it was a way to, to help hold the city accountable. 
to help hold the subcommittee accountable and know the subcommittee did not agree on everything. And so, which, which was fine, um, but it was a way to hear everybody's voice, which is why it was expanded. Um, a part of listening to what the commissions, the commissioners said and their recommendations, but most importantly, their recommendations came from the public comment. And so a part of it has to do with where do, where do we see the community members that come and talk to us directly because some people didn't participate in those surveys because they didn't feel comfortable. They didn't feel comfortable speaking publicly. And this is thing, these are things that came back to me, which is why the this, this survey was open because I figured people would be safe to fill out a survey. And so all of these, all of these different avenues to, to collect public comment happened to make sure that as many voices were included. After we got the surveys was, well, how do we, how do we decipher residents in the neighborhood, Menlo Park residents, and then everyone else. There was no way to do that. Absolutely no way to do that. And for me, I have to look at the accountability to my constituents first, my constituents first, like each one of you do. And so there's no way for me to do that other than somebody who talks to me directly. So that's what made it difficult to say, well, we listened to all this comment. So now okay, we're going to try to figure out out of the 95% that supported it, how many of them are Menlo Park constituents? There's no way to do that. And so for me, and I go back to a comment I made earlier, I don't have a problem being the one who votes against something because I'm supporting the smallest voice. I don't have a problem with that. So I just wanted to make sure that we heard all the voices. I don't know if that helps. I'm just sharing with you along the process of four years. And then on top of that, and I don't know if ever, anyone remembers the fact that our seniors actually um, protested because they didn't want a new building, because they felt like they weren't included in the process at all. And so addressing that, and just keep in mind that we're all volunteers and we still try to go above and beyond to serve our community, even when you disagree with the decisions that we make. Um, and speaking about not, I won't get into the putting whether, what exactly the name should be or not. I think we need to have a name. Um, I, I don't think this should, I think that this has been, like I said, drawn out and painful. And I think we owe it to the community to resolve this issue. Um, I don't, to me, it's not about a wayfinding sign and a deadline for printing something. It's about um, moving forward and um, having a resolution on this process um, and also being able to say, hey, I'll meet you at the hmm. Um, and to be honest, up until um, this whole, so I've been on council for three years, so I haven't been part of the entire thing, um, but up until this, I would have said, I'll meet you at the Annetta Harris Center. Um, that's how I always thought of it. So I'm very sympathetic to those who feel like that's the name and, and the legacy. Um, so I'm I'm really conflicted right now because um, I wanna, like I said, honor your leadership, but I also wanna honor the community voices and and I'm, I'm feeling a tension um, from me being someone um, who's coming in it from this angle. Um, does anyone else want to say anything? I would just um, request if we can have the, uh, the first slide that um, listed the, um, had a picture of the old campus just briefly um, put up just, um, just, just um, city clerk Karen has this oh, sorry. slide. Thank you, sorry. And actually, um, before we go further, I want to acknowledge um, the library and community services staff who have been tireless on throughout all of this um, with Mr. Reinhardt, Ms. Natalia Jones and um, Mr. Rondell Howard have been 
amazing support through all of this. So thank you. So this was um, from one of the first staff reports that um, from the um, on the Bellhaven community campus as it was called at that time. Um, and I just wanted to um, bring this up for anyone who might, um, it, it was helpful to me to remember what things looked like. And then I do want to acknowledge, I think this is an incredibly difficult um, decision. It is very, um, I am having, I struggle um, with this. We've heard so many comments from the community, um, the greater community for, um, to name it Ms. Harris, after Ms. Harris which I believe we are doing regardless. It's just at how, at what level. Um, and I do hear from people who do have not felt comfortable speaking up and saying, um, giving other opinions and other ideas about what they feel that the center should be named. And um, how many of the, just of the all of the all of the feedback we have heard, how much of that is from the community, how from the current residents in Bellhaven. Um, even if we say of the being conservative, saying 800 surveys, even if a quarter of those were from the community, that still is as large, large number, and we have not heard a significant number saying something different, but we have heard voices that are loud, that are saying, and it's, yeah. I'm, I struggle with yeah. how to, I, it would be, how to, I think it would that. be helpful if you could, um, you don't have to give names, but are you talking about a handful of voices or dozens of voices? Because it's, again, it, we don't have access to this information and we're trying to understand um, how to evaluate these differing viewpoints. I would say it is small, well, it's tens, in the tens um, is what I would, I would say, I don't know if um, Vice Mayor Taylor wants to elaborate more, um, but it, there is a stark difference in the number. Um, but as Vice Mayor Taylor has said, we do listen to everyone. We do not make decisions very honestly, even before we get on the dais, um, we come up with recommendations. It doesn't mean we have made a decision yet. We are still listening to all of our colleagues, all of the um, community and, um, having this discussion. Thank you, Council Member Nash. Um, I don't have any exact numbers, um, but I can say out of the, the 15 people that say to keep the Onetta Harris name on the building, at least five have, have offered a different opinion. Um, not having Bellhaven name, um, not having Onetta Harris's name, having a name that's all inclusive. Nothing specific, and I was hoping it would show up in the survey so that at least we can point to something in the survey that says this is a, a voice different than the other voices that we've heard. And this evening, we didn't even hear any voices saying anything different. So I do wanna to chime in with the, um, the statement that obviously like what I think the subcommittee is, is doing is hearing from a lot of different voices and but those are voices that I have no doubt have also reached out to every council member, and and so it is not an ex exclusive subset of voices, and so I, I, uh, that only the subcommittee have has access to. Um, so I want to be clear: whatever decision is made, um, or whatever vote, I think each council member should own fully, um, in understanding and knowing that that we have all throughout this process had access to lots of information and had access to, to lots of advocates. But what I will say, uh, there 
what the subcommittee has reached or what they have proposed is actually not a position that any advocate has reached out to me about. <laughs> to be frank, what they've landed at here is, for lack of a better word, what you might call a compromise. And it is not a position that anyone has ever come to me before. What I have heard is from people who say there should be no names. Or I've heard from people who say that the Onetta Harris name should be the name, but no one has said keeping the name for what it existed before for those services. And so I do want to give some, um, some deference and, and some respect to the, the subcommittee here in that what you're getting here is not just them sort of bringing what they have heard or what has been lobbied to them, but what really seems to me um, uh, some sort of compromise uh, based on, on the different um, uh, positions that they have heard on this issue. Thank you for that. Council Member Nash. So I will um, acknowledge that, um, especially with one of our library commissioners sitting in the front row, thank you, um, that the library parks and rec and library commission did come up with the recommendation for each of the individual um, function, functional areas to maintain their name. But yes, we, we do have a, a mix, thank you. And I guess the other piece is, um, which I think is obvious, is just as with almost all council decisions, we will not make everybody happy. And what we are really trying to do is balance the voices, weigh what we think is the best path forward. Thank you. Council Member uh, Dorr. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you so much for this input. Um, and I deeply respect that the subcommittee is looking for a compromise here. Um, and also I, I know where my vote is going to be. And I know that I would like to see this, you know, it is one center, it's functionally one big building. And I see that as a center. And I see that as the aquatics, the library, the recreation, the senior program, the youth center, the youth work, that's all happening in the same building, just in separate rooms. And I, one, I, I do think we need to have a full name for this building. And two, I'm supportive of what the community members have shared of saying that we need, that we should name this the Oneta Harris Community Center or Community Campus. Um, and so that that is where I am after this conversation, after the feedback that I've heard. Um, and that, yeah, that's all I have to say. Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you, Mayor Willis. And, and in the interest of, of time and decision-making, I mean, I, I suggest that you make a motion if you wanna move things along or Council Member Nash and I can make a motion and that's, I'm putting that on at your doorstep. Council Member Dora. Actually, honestly, I need um, I need like a, a few minutes. This is a, a big decision. I'm feeling a lot of weight <laughs> about this decision. And um, I think um, I just personally need like two minutes to just like sit with my back <laughs> turned um, and take a breath on this. So please excuse me. Okay, we're going to take a five minute break. We'll come back at 850. Thank you.
All right, having our city council back at our in-person dais. Mayor Willison, you may reconvene the meeting. All right, thank you everybody for that breather. Um, did someone else wanna say something before we move on? I needed that break, but this I wanna allow Vice Mayor Taylor, did you wanna add anything before I speak? Okay, so um, I appreciated that time to take a deep breath um, and uh, think this over. Um, so as I mentioned, this is a extremely complicated calculation of decision-making. Um, I think we're all going through and we take this very seriously. Um, I first wanna acknowledge that um, the stories that I've heard over the last few years about Ms. Onetta Harris and about other community leaders and about the history of Bellhaven, about the transformative um, process that coming into a community center and feeling loved and cared for and how that has lasted from childhood through adulthood to seniorhood and the stories that have been passed on. Um, going off um, council member, uh, Vice Mayor Taylor's comments, I mean, if there is a silver lining in this kind of painful process, it's getting to hear these stories and hear um, this this um, history. And I do completely support um, really almost making the center a, in part a museum to celebrate the history and have it be um, a destination for people to come and learn about black history and all kinds of history, indigenous history, um, current history, everything on the peninsula and in, in this area. Um, so I totally support documentary. So as I mentioned, I, I was when you last when I last spoke, I was feeling a lot of tension in between listening to the community and listening to what these recommendations are and how to reconcile that. And at the end of the day, I just kind of have to go with something. And the the last thought in my mind is Vice Mayor Cecilia Taylor is an elected colleague, elected by the representatives of her district. And at the end of the day, she's the closest ones to um, understanding the needs of, of her own residents. And in this case, given that kind of I'm in this middle spot, I am gonna honor um, what she's bringing forth with her subcommittee, um, which to me, um, as council member Combs mentioned, does feel in a way a bit of a compromise. Um, it's one of those ones that I know no one's going to leave here particularly satisfied with. Um, and I know that's painful, but um, I think that there's going to be ways. And I know that I'm committed. I'm sure um, Library and Community Services Director Sean Reidhardt and Natalia Jones and Vice Mayor Taylor and, and everyone is committed to making sure that um, the name Onetta Harris stays in that building and is, is known. Um, and so I'm going to be, um, if assuming you make a motion, um, going with the subcommittee's recommendation. That being said, I really feel strongly about giving this building a name tonight and not letting this drag out further. And so I'd like to hear if you have any other thoughts about that, because um, I really don't want to go with a nothing name tonight. So Vice Mayor Taylor. Councilmember Nash, I thought you wanted to take this one. No. Yes. All right. I appreciate everything that's been said and wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, and I also agree that we should not leave it unnamed. Um, so I would like to have a discussion first before we making a formal motion about um, Bellhaven multi-generational community campus. And I guess I would also like to find out from staff whether or not that would work given- Can I, can I chime in? Yes. Oh, to me, it's a bit of a mouthful. I'm, I'm worried about the length of it before Please staff make, even weighs in. Okay. So I, I would just take, community I love, campus. I love the idea of a multi-generational campus. I think it is going to be a multi-general camp. I don't, it um, is definitely. And um, I just feel like it doesn't roll off the tongue. Okay. Um, that's just my personal thought. But if it's really, if you feel very strongly about it, I could support it. It just seems like a lot to be like, I'm headed to the multi, I can't even say it right now. 
yeah, Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you. And, and through the mayor, if I could ask staff, um, how many letters can we um, put on the building? Do we know? And then where's the, uh, if you could put the picture up so that we could see where the name would reside. So yes, thank you for the question. I think this is the image that the vice mayor was referring to. This is a photo of the actual building, the front entry, as it appeared a few months back. Um, and so if um, a name was affixed to the front of the building, it would likely go in like this area. That's the place that's been kind of set aside if a name is selected, it would be kind of suspended from underneath the soffit right here. And you can kind of see some conduit that's kind of hanging there because the, the sign could be could be lighted. Um, as far as like the length of the name, um, it's really like kind of city council's direction. I, I will say that the name Bellhaven Multi-Generational Community Campus is, is pretty lengthy. Um, if the direction is to make that fit on a sign, then we would with, work with the designers to make it fit. Um, if you're asking, um, you know, like what's the typical length of a name for a building that does seem a bit on the long side. To me, it's it's less about whether it fits in that space. I think we can make it fit. It's more about saying, hey, I'll meet you at the Bellhaven Community Campus. Or the, just, it's a lot. And it's going to be put on a lot of signs. And like we've been talking about bus bus things and, and whatnot. So, but uh, Vice Mayor Taylor. Well, do you have a recommendation? I was just thinking of taking out the word multi-generational, which I know it hurts because we want it to be, it, it will be that. Um, but again, I'd like to hear what everyone else thinks. I don't mean to. I mean, I'm, I'm fine. I, either way, I think, uh, obviously if we go with multi-generational as the formal name, no one's going to call it that. Like what, what, like it's Leland Stanford junior university. <laughs> right now. Um, so if we decide to, to go with, Bellhaven Community Campus are, are at the most generation. I, I can be supportive of either option. Yeah, that being said, I mean, if 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 it, staff thinks this would work, putting the name on it, the Bellhaven Multi Generational Community Campus, and then in every other thing saying the Bellhaven Community Campus. So if we want the marquee name to have the word multi generational, that might be a way to to split the baby on this one. But I don't know if that makes sense. Vice Mayor Taylor, what are your thoughts right now? Well I, well, I was thinking, what was the language used in the Parks and Rec Master Plan? Uh, thank you for the question, Vice Mayor. In the Parks and Recreation Facilities Master Plan accepted by City Council in 2019, there is reference to the need to construct a new center, which is the center we're talking about, and it was referenced in that document as a Bell Haven multi-generational community center, I believe. I mean, if you want to make a motion and then, or we can for the just shorter keep discussing name. it. No, uh, for the shorter name. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Well, I'll I'll make a motion that we name the new facility the Bellhaven Community Campus. Oh, and keep the existing services with the existing names. Does that need to be, Ms. Heron, does that need to be included in the motion? Um, I do have that in the motion to, um, as soon as we have a first and a second, I can read it its entirety, make sure that it's clear with legal and staff. So I would like to take branch out of the Bellhaven Library. So it becomes Bellhaven Library. And I would like to, um, actually, I'd be happy to second the motion after. Um, I'd also like to include that we have, um, further discussion about, or maybe approve um, whatever we can give direction to um, the documentary. And um, also regarding the um, dedications, bringing that to the community working group and having suggestions that come back um, by the end of the year. And for the dedications. Thank you. The, the other piece um, that we recommended was looking at the programming that was established by Mrs. Harris. 
and what still exists today, what is working and how can we improve it? Because I think some of those services are still needed if they're, if they don't exist. And I'm not sure if that's a staff question or. Uh, thank you. Um, so I, I think there's, there's like a motion that's very specific taking shape around like names. And then I'm also hearing like maybe some direction for some additional follow-up from staff. So I think the, the last part of that question was we look into the, the programs that were sort of initiated by Ms. Harris and which ones are continuing to this day and, and so forth. And I'm looking over to the city manager and city attorney. I, I don't think that necessarily needs to be part of like the motion per se, but we can take that as direction um, for staff to follow up on. That, that piece of it anyway. Sorry, Vice. Um, so we have we do have a motion and a second. Um, I know there's been some additional direction. I have some additional direction. Um, city manager, should we vote on the motion in the second and then return to discuss some direction? Um, or should we give all the direction while we're in this limbo land? Uh, yes, Mayor, thank you. It may be best to uh, first vote on the motion and then follow up on the direction, make sure there's consensus on the direction. Okay, so given that we have a motion and a second, is there, I'm kind of jumping City Clerk Heron's job, is there more discussion on the motion before us? I see um, Council Member Dorr. Yes, I, I already have a sense that I'm going to be a lone vote here, which will be my first on the dais. Um, and I just want to uh, acknowledge the community that no one on the dais is is not saying that there is uh, a fantastic legacy here to recognize. And what I appreciate from what has been shared by the subcommittee and everyone else in the dais is that there is extreme respect for that legacy and an honoring of the the work and leadership of Monetta Harris. And so I, I I respect the decision that it sounds like the rest of the councils come to in deciding the names. Um, I will be respectfully declining there uh, because. I think that there is something really powerful about having a name that will be on all the signs across our town, uh, signaling to where folks can come. And you know, my hope is that folks that don't even come to see the center itself and read the plaques inside can get a new name in their heads and get curious and look up someone like Ms. Onetta Harris. Um, even when, you know, uh, yeah, she's one woman uh, there's so many leaders in our community that have done so much, uh, but she is one of those leaders. And I just want to acknowledge the impact that I think it can have to have someone's name on a, a full building. Um, so I, with that, I, I, I think it sounds like we're move, ready to move to a vote. Thank you. Um, so City Clerk Karen, I'm seeing a Vice Mayor Taylor's motion and um, Councilmember Nash is second on our electronic screen. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor Willison. So we have a motion on the floor by Vice Mayor Taylor and a second by City Council Member Nash to approve the name Bell Haven Community Center and major programs provided by the subcommittee for the multi-use center at 100 Terminal Avenue. And I will include the subcommittee's report as an attachment to the motion. And I'm looking to Reinhardt, Sean. Uh, could could we just clarify? I thought I heard Vice Mayor Taylor's motion. The name she recommended or moved was Bellhaven Community Campus, and I just heard Bellhaven Community Center. So maybe it's worth clarifying that. Thank you. So approve the name Bellhaven Community Campus and major programs provided by the subcommittee for the multi-use center at 100 Terminal Avenue. Thank you. Any further city council question or discussion? Okay, seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes with city council member Dorr dissenting. Okay, um, so now um, we were discussing further direction. And so I know Vice Mayor Taylor and Council Member Nash discussed the documentary. I'm very much in support of that. Um, I also wanted to bring up um, the, the uh, making sure that Oneta Harris is her picture and legacy is in there 
I'll turn over to you, Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you, Mayor Willison. And the the I don't know if it's one of the goal of the the working groups, but it definitely can be included. But I think that some of the um, the work that was done at the commission level, gathering information, um, can be included as far as who did what. Um, I think that's a start. And then also just making sure that what was learned about, uh, much more that we've learned about on Ms. Onetta Harris is also included in there too. Um, I have not done a documentary before, so I'm sure that whoever we commissioned to do that will have some type of structure to be able to do that and just wanna make sure that as much information that we have is included. Um, this is something that I'm sure that someone has probably started in the past and it just hasn't completed. Um, but our timeline, our history is extensive um, since we've annexed the Menlo Park. So I just think that this is the best way to capture that information and for it to be shared. As far as what we display and put in the building, um, that's something that is still to, you know, to be determined um, how, what the inside of the building looks like. And I'm not even sure when that comes to the council um, or to the, the working group. So I guess that's a question for Mr. Reinhardt and staff is, it sounds like there's definitely an interest in this documentary and almost this like museum historic piece. Like what's the next steps on, on that? Uh, thank you. So um, I think staff, this is today is like the first we've heard about like a, a documentary um, so we would need to um, kind of assess, you know, what it would entail, what the cost may be, kind of the timeline for that. So like if that's the direction from the city council, I think we would need to to uh, do that homework and kind of come back to you and like what what it would take. Yeah, thank you. And and we're hoping to to commission a documentarian. So it would definitely wouldn't be work on staff. Um, so hopefully there'll be information that could be shared. Oops, hopefully information that can be shared with staff to look at different um, documentarians. Thank you. I also um, want to take this opportunity to acknowledge again the generous contribution that Meta made and that I know you're going to be having conversations in the working group and that staff's going to be looking at the dedication and the plaque, but making sure that there's some prominent acknowledgement of Meta's huge contribution to making this possible. So just want to acknowledge that. Which you can't have an opinion about. Um, we also definitely want to acknowledge all of the um, people who were instrumental in bringing this project forward. Sure. Uh, Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you. As far as the the acknowledgement, is that something something that needs to be done? Is that a, a hard deadline for that? Um, for so, like, if they were to appear on a dedication plaque, the, uh, for that dedication plaque to be fabricated and installed and on display when the building opens, then we would want to have a a. a that content like finalized by like New Year's in yeah. order to kind of meet the timelines for fabrication and installation, uh, assuming that the the new facility opens on the timeline we anticipate at this moment. Thank you. And as far as the decor and what happens on the inside, is there a deadline is when that information is needed? I'm, and I'm just thinking um, of, as Mayor Willison said, is is making what I don't know if it's the museum is the right term, but just as you walk through, I'm envisioning you walking through the history of the community as you enter the center. So is there a deadline when that would need to happen? Uh, depending on the, the nature of it, but from what I'm hearing described, that doesn't necessarily need to be determined by the end of this calendar year, New Year's, because um, we were already planning in the new facility to do quite a bit of like local history interpretive displays there is a wall that's been identified for like rotating displays of either community art or historical interest um certainly when it comes to like things like putting 
photographs on walls, that, that doesn't take a, as much lead time as like a dedication plaque does. Uh, so I would say probably the January timeframe would be maybe the, the best time to, to do that so that we're not waiting too far, too close to opening, but it wouldn't have, need to happen quite as quickly as the dedication plaque. What I'm hoping for is to have prominent figures permanently on a part of the decor in the new building. So it's not a rotation. Um, can I jump in here? Can we task the subcommittee um, to continue working with staff on these items? Would that be, no, would that, would that be acceptable? Um, yes, Council Member Dorr. Okay, I'm seeing nods up here. Uh, Council Member Combs? Yeah, totally aligned with that. I would only say, and not speaking to what the content of the plaque would dedication plaque would be but only to say that it should be similar to what we see in Ariaga, like right I mean that that should be the model for like it, uh huh no the at the Ariaga Ariaga center like right that there's a big so, sort of thing there right um I, I don't know what you call it but I, I would just think that we would do something similar like right as as far as the size and, and prominence that the, that's the only thing I was going to say but yes I'm totally fine with with the subcommittee taking these details on. A pin for future conversation there. Um, I, it sounds like the documentary work is not something that's been discussed previously, but as someone who took a documentary class at Stanford, I know there are some fantastic folks there, MFAs that are doing this work. And I think this could be also an interesting way to look at a, a, a partnership there where they could donate in time or in kind support through uh, filming support and other support maybe um, if I, I'm not sure how much the cost would be, but I think that's something that should be looked into. All right. So I, I think for, um, so as the mayor, almost soon to be ex-mayor or former mayor, I'm very sensitive to agenda management and making sure that when, is this going to have to come back for council approval? Cause I would like it to be kind of a shorter discussion um, where you know, a major recommendation is brought forward and we're just kind of checking it off and saying, oh, you forgot that person, but not like a big thing. Like, how do we finalize this dedication plaque so that it's um, efficient and complete? <laughs> uh, is that possible? I'm, I'm looking over to the city manager to give some, give his input on what that return uh touch with the city council as far as the content of the plaque might be um for some of the other items that were directed um that there may be um a cost associated with that i think that would need to come back to city council but i think those are those are kind of maybe two separate things as far as the dedication plaque um i'm kind of looking over to the city manager for his thoughts on that uh yes thank you so with um <clears throat> Uh, there's kind of a spectrum of things. I, I do think it would be important for the full city council to see the content of the plaque before it's fabricated. So there aren't any, uh, surprises a after the fact. So, um, the, the most, um, one way of doing that would be an information item. It could be a consent item. It could be some other communication, but I do think it's important for the full content to be, um, put together that shared, a uh, certain period of time and then move forward from that. So, um, I can work with the current mayor, future mayor on how best to do that. But um, I'm seeing some head nods of potentially having it be on some sort of council agenda. Um, so happy to to do that. And it can totally be done in a, an efficient manner that doesn't take up much uh, meeting time. Okay, thank you. I saw Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you. And I'm putting it out there because I'd like to see um, a plaque that includes um, all of the donations, anyone who donated, also the community members acknowledging the ones who helped bring this project to the city and then also acknowledging council members um, and staff as well, if that's possible. I think go forward and I think we are ready for you to take that next step and um, we look forward to seeing what the, that wording is gonna be and hopefully we will think it's great. Okay, anything else? Anything else on this agenda item? All right, um, thank, thanks again to everyone um, who was along this journey. And um, again, 
I look forward, I think we all look forward to seeing everyone at the grand opening um, where we will all be there in celebration to, to reflect on the legacy of the community and to enjoy this um, new amazing um, center. All right, with that, um, we are gonna be moving on. So thank you very much, Ms. Jones and Mr. Reinhardt and everyone who um, got us to this point. And again, special thanks to the subcommittee to our commissions and to all community members. We are now going to move on to our next regular business item, which is J2. Actually, we are, excuse me for a moment. Um, we are now going to go on to uh, four regular business items and they're gonna be presented together in one presentation. Thank you for that. Um, the four regular business items that will come to us kind of in a package are J2, J3, J4, and J5. J2, adopt a resolution to ratify the successor agreement between the City of Menlo Park and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 829, expiring June 30th, 2026. J3, adopt resolutions to approve side letters of agreement amending the memoranda of understanding between the City of Menlo Park and the Service Employees International Union Local 521, Menlo Park Police Officers Association and Menlo Park Police Sergeants Association to modify medical premium contributions for 2024 and appropriate additional funds. J4, adopt a resolution to approve amendments to the Management Compensation Plan document for unrepresented management classifications effective November 19th, 2023. And J5, adopt a resolution to amend the salary schedule effective November 19th, 2023. Here to introduce all of these items is our Administrative Services Director, Brittany Mello. Good evening, Ms. Mello. Good evening, City Council. So before you tonight for Council's consideration is the approval of four labor-related items related to the City's supervisory and management employees' pay and benefits, medical contribution increases for calendar year 2024 across employee groups, and an amended master salary schedule that incorporates these adjustments. So the first item before you, if we can have the next slide is to adopt a resolution to approve the successor labor agreement with the American Federation of State, County, and, um, and Municipal Employees, Local 829, or AFSCME. AFSCME is a bargaining unit comprised of supervisory and journey-level non-sworn personnel across all city departments. AFSCME represents approximately 31 classifications with 46.5 budgeted full-time equivalents, or FTEs, this fiscal year. The existing Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, expired on June 30th. The City held a hearing to receive public input before initiating negotiations with ASME on April 4th, and Charles Sakai of Sloan Sakai Young and Wong, Wong was appointed by the City Council to serve as the City's Chief Negotiator. Mr. Sakai and Human Resources staff participated in negotiations with ASME from May through October, reaching tentative agreement on November 3rd. ASME members ratified the agreement on November 13th. The key terms of the agreement are summarized within the staff report and shown in the redlined version of the MOU in attachment B. So of note, since the posting of the agenda, some typographical errors were found in appendix B, which is the proposed pay ranges effective November 19th um, in the MOU. Uh, specifically, these pay ranges erroneously included the market adjustments that are for seven classifications that are not scheduled to take effect until January 2025. Um, Appendix B has been corrected, and the changes are shown on the table on the screen um, on the next slide. Note that these corrected pay ranges are lower than the ranges that were published, and um, uh, yes. So also of note, uh, confidential employees, which are non-management employees who are unrepresented and designated as confidential due to the nature of their work, are proposed to receive the same salary and benefit terms that are negotiated between the city and AFSCME. This group is comprised of seven classifications and six current full-time equivalents. The total fiscal impact for the proposed three-year agreement for AFSCME is $1,317,991, or an average annual cost of $439,330. 
staff is requesting an additional appropriation of $246,170 to fund the MOU terms for the remainder of fiscal year 23-24 for AFSME and an appropriation of $35,801 for confidential employees. The recommended action uh, was on the screen before you. If we go back um, a slide for that item. Um, maybe two slides. Okay. Um, and so I will continue forward to this over to the second item for the presentation. Um, so the second item before you is to adopt resolutions to approve side letters of agreement amending the MOUs with the Service Employees International Union Local 521 or SCIU, the Menlo Park Police Officers Association or POA, and the Menlo Park Police Sergeants Association, or PSA, to modify the city's medical premium contributions for the plan year 2024. So following a large spike in medical premiums planned to begin in 2024, ASME negotiated a higher adjustment to the city's medical plan contributions, which are normally two to 4% um, tied to inflation. In order to continue aligning the city's medical contributions for all unionized and confidential employees, the proposed side letters would provide the same adjustment as AFSCME received um, if approved um, for SEIU, POA, and PSA. The total fiscal impact of the side letters is $59,567 for calendar year 2024. So staff is requesting an additional appropriation of $29,784 to fund these MOU terms for the remainder of this fiscal year 23-24 and that recommended action is on the screen. The third item before you is to adopt a resolution to approve amendments to the management compensation plan for unrepresented management classifications that would be effective November 19th. Unrepresented management employees are neither self-organized nor represented by an exclusive bargaining representative. The group is comprised of 37 classifications with 27 budgeted FTEs this fiscal year. With the tentative agreement reached between the city and AFSCME, it's important to also look to address the management compensation plan to ensure appropriate internal alignment and avoid narrowing the salary differentials between supervisors and managers. If salary ranges for managers are not adjusted, the city would experience wage compaction, which impacts in-house employees' desire to promote within the organization and the ability to retain and recruit highly qualified employees in the management ranks. The proposed amendments to the compensation plan are summarized within the staff report and shown in the red line version of the compensation plan in attachment B. The total cost of this proposal is approximately $445,591 over two fiscal years. Staff would be requesting an additional appropriation of $127,740 to fund these amendments for the remainder of the fiscal year with the recommended action before you. And finally, the fourth item before you is to adopt a resolution to amend the salary schedule effective November 19th. This item brings together the amendments across the impacted employee groups to amend the city's master salary schedule, which covers all employees. As I mentioned earlier, there were some typographical errors found with the proposed Ask Me MOU positions where the market-based adjustments for those class seven classifications had been erroneously applied. There was also one additional market-based adjustment for a confidential employee, which had been erroneously applied, and these errors were present in the proposed master salary schedule. So these corrections are shown in purple on the screen. If we jump forward. Thank you. And note again that uh, these corrected pay ranges are lower than the ranges that were published. The cost of these salary schedule amendments um, would be captured through the separate agenda items um, that you are considering this evening. So there would be no additional appropriation to approve the master salary schedule. And with that, this concludes my reports and we are available to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Mello. Um, City Clerk Karen, can you please call for public comment? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. 
So for members of the public, we have combined items J2 through J5. So at this time, if you wish to provide comment on item J2, adopt a resolution to ratify the successor agreement between the City of Menlo Park and AFSME, expiring June 30th of 2026, or item J3, adopt a resolution to approve side letters of agreement, amending the MOU between Menlo Park and SEIU, the Menlo Park POA and the Menlo Park PSA to modify medical premium contributions for 2024 and appropriate additional funds. Item J4, adopt a resolution to approve amendments to the management compensation plan document for unrepresented management classifications effective November 19th. And item J5, adopt a resolution to amend the salary schedule effective November 19th. Now is the time to engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine now. If participating in person, please complete a speaker card at the back table and return to me at the clerk's desk. And this will be the final call for public comment on our labor related items, J2, J3, J4, and J5. Okay, I'm currently seeing three speakers. Final call for public comment, J2 through J5. Okay, so we have a total of three speakers, and our first speaker will be Rod Palmquist. Good evening, City Council members. My name is Rod Palmquist, and I am the union business agent for AFSCME Local 829. Our union represents nearly 50 permanent Menlo Park employees who work for the libraries, public works, police dispatch, information technology, planning, parks and recreation, and more. I'm speaking tonight regarding the memorandum of understanding before the city council this evening. This contract clearly reflects Menlo Park residents' values of investing in frontline employees, recruiting and retaining top talent, and supporting workers' ability to live in the communities they serve. It does so by making market adjustments for over half a dozen job classifications, providing wage increases to address rising costs of living for all AFSCME members, and by eliminating the cost subsidies that employees have previously paid for the city's share of its workers' retirement security. This is a particularly tricky and long negotiation process. And I'd like to give special thanks to Charles Sakai, your negotiator. I've worked for AFSCME for over 10 years, and Charles is an excellent public affairs consultant who was critical in making this agreement possible. Thank you, City Council, for supporting a fair contract that reflects the value of AFSCME workers and everything they bring to the city of Menlo Park. Our next speaker will be Whit Loy, followed by our final speaker, Adam Patterson. Good evening, City Council. Uh, my name is Whit Loy. I'm the ASME president. Uh, just to follow up with what Rod said, we wanted to extend a thanks to you, the council, for coming to an agreement with us that we feel is fair and breaking the cycle of the pension subsidy that was being paid, not only for us, but for across the city it seems management is also going to be out of that as well um i wanted to also extend a thanks to my members the entire membership for supporting us through this process and out of the out of contract time to be able to get us to this agreement again we wouldn't have been able to do it without their support and mayor wilson I can uh, relate to some of how you feel with having a burden on your shoulders. I can feel a little bit of a weight lifted at last night when we got our TA passed, and then hopefully tonight we can get this deal over the finish line. And as the leader, I can feel a little bit more relieved because I don't have the membership kind of resting on my shoulders because this is a big deal to a lot of people because this impacts decisions that are made at home and life-changing 
decisions about how people come and work for the city or if they leave the city. So again, we wanted to thank you. And, and also I wanted to thank Charles as well. Um, we had some tough meetings, but again, we were able to get it over the finish line. And I think everyone deserves a pat on the back. So thanks to everyone that was involved. Thank you. And our final speaker will be Adam Patterson. Uh, good evening, City Council. Um, I just want to echo Rod and Witt's statements. Uh, I'm an employee in the Community Development Department and an AFSCME member. And I just want to express my gratitude to, to all involved for your patience and hard work during these negotiations and to the City Council for your support. Thank you and have a good night. Great, seeing no further hands or cards for items J2 through J5. Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you um, very much for those public comments. Um, we truly value our employees. So we um, do appreciate um, your comments and we appreciate you. So thank you. Um, so are there any comments, questions, feedback on these items? Um, they, these are for all the four labor items. Council Member Dorr. Um, Mayor Willison, pardon the interruption. Um, it may be easier to break them up for discussion singularly so we can vote on each if that's okay. Okay. Um, so actually, the, can, I, can I just see if anyone um, sure. has, I think if it's okay, are we allowed to discuss them in a group? Um, I don't know if there's going to be a ton of discussion. So I think it might be expeditious if we allow general comments and then Perfect. we can vote one by one. But thank you, City Clerk Karen. Thank you. Council Member Dorr. Yes, thank you. My comment is on J4, so just on that one. Um, this is a, something that came up in a previous conversation and was mentioned here in the report, um, but a desire that I shared last time of wanting to see the sustainability manager moved from the 30% below benchmark to the 25% bench, below benchmark. This is a role that just opened up. Um, and so we are, I think the city is about to start a recruitment process. Uh, we're looking for someone to fill this role. This is the person who's going to have to be managing and supporting the $4.5 million that we need to get out to support electrification uh, projects in Bellhaven. This is the person who's going to have to manage as the city has stated a priority of working on the climate action plan. There are a lot of other things and pieces to work there, like figuring out how do we finish building the, or getting funding for, and then building uh, the levy uh, along the along the Bayfront? We have the 30% gap still. They're, the projects go on and on. These are just a few. And so for those reasons, I'd propose uh, moving that person up so we can attract great talent and motivate and, and get the right person to help with all these really big projects. Thank you. Um, so I would actually like to turn that suggestion to staff to ask what the impact um, or staff's feedback on that request or suggestion. Yes, thank you. Um, we we will, of course, take council direction on, um, on this. I did conduct a salary compensation um, study of other similar sustainability roles in the cities we that we typically look at. Um, just Currently, our sustainability manager is pretty much in line with the average uh, for the most similar roles. Um, different cities organize these positions a little differently. So, um, but it, it is a strategy call by the, by the council with what you would like to do with the tier assignment. But I, you know, at least I have. And, and data. following up, um, those positions are they doing comparable? work because I know that's it's a main priority for us and we, we're trying to really push on this item or did I mean I know that's like would be a lot of analysis but I'm just curious yeah so so we typically use um, a group of 12 cities for our compensation analysis and there's about one two let's see three there's about six that are more similar to how we have our manager structured. So that's what I'm mostly looking at in terms of the averages. Thank you, sorry, council member Dorn. Another question here, if there was to be a bump up from the 30% below to the 25% um, below benchmark, the financial impact of that? So there's, um, 
bumping up the tier actually changes the overall salary range. So there's not an immediate financial impact. It just allows us to assign a salary within a, a range that has a higher, it, it's a higher range. So um, it, it depends on the negotiation with whoever would be offered the position. Um, there, uh, so it, it just depends on where they come in on the, on the range. Um. I'm thinking more organizationally because, um, I mean, if I, I think about it now, I'm looking at economic development, which is kind of another priority of ours downtown, housing manager, which is another one of our priorities. Um, and so um, do you see this, um, how do you see this fitting into kind of larger organizational structure issues? So the way the tiers were originally devised, um, they kind of indicate span of control of the different positions, um, uh, supervisory duties, um, those types of things were taken into consideration by the council when these tiers were established. So um, it, it may make sense to look at the tiers, you know, as a longer term project in the future, because there are other positions that on in, in that tier with the sustainability manager too, that like you said, that you might want to look at. Councilmember Combs. What other positions are in that tier? The assistant to the city manager, city clerk, housing manager, economic development manager, and sustainability manager are the ones we're currently um, filling in the city. We do have other positions on the salary schedule that we um, keep on the salary schedule as the needs evolve, but we don't currently fill those. So, um, okay, so because this is, we're we're looking at, Tier tier one, correct? Yes. So the uh, assistant city manager, city clerk, housing manager, economic development manager, sustainability manager. Again, the way you're not supposed to uh, approach salaries is doing things ad hoc. And that's exactly what this is. It takes one position, puts it in a silo and say all the things that that does, but then doesn't look at the other positions that are in that tier. So if we're gonna do some analysis, it needs to be fair. And to be fair, it's then to look at all of the responsibilities across all of the positions in these tiers and not to pull out one and say that for this reason, for, for, or for a series of reasons only related to that, not looking at the whole picture, that should be moved up. Um, and, and so I would be completely opposed to that. And I'm completely opposed to this approach of just pulling out one of these positions. Because if you want to pull out the sustainability ma manager and move them to 25% below, Let's do it for the city clerk too. She's doing a really good job over there. So, so but that that's what happens when you start approaching these these things this way. Thank you, um, uh, Assistant City Manager. I, you mentioned that there could be more of a holistic process where we take a look at those, and um, I'm curious if you have a proposal for where and how that kind of conversation could happen in the future. Yes, there could be a process where you you do take a deeper dive into Tier One. Um, positions and and can make some considerations on movement. Um, I think we're likely a little tight this year uh, with um, our the remaining um, agendas. Uh, so that's something that you know we could talk about um, where to fit that in. yeah, if there's if there's a place that makes sense as we prepare for the next fiscal year um, and budget cycles and everything, I would love for us to be able to explore that in at that moment. Thank you. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you, Councilmember Dorr, for bringing that up, and thank you, Councilmember Combs, for your perspective as well. I'm I'm supportive of that if it includes the whole tier. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, are there any other comments, questions on the four labor items before we start voting? Okay. So um, we're going to start with um, actually City Clerk Heron. I'm seeing J. Or, oh, you're moving it. I'm seeing J2. Um, I'm waiting to see J1 on our screen. J1 was naming. Sorry, just kidding. J2, we can go oh, back. look at that. Council. I have motion. Okay. Oh, and it already went. Okay. <laughs> so we have Councilmember Dorf motioned and by, uh, Councilmember Nash second. Yes. Can we just one moment? 
Okay, so I have a motion on the floor by City Council Member Doer and a second by City Council Member Nash to adopt a resolution to approve the successor agreement between the City of Menlo Park and AFSME uh, expiring June 30th, 2026 and appropriate the additional funds from unassigned fund balance in the fiscal year 2023-24 budget. Any further City Council question or discussion on this item? Seeing none. Please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. And we're now moving on to J2. J3. Uh, sorry, just kidding. J3. And I just motioned. I second. Thank you. So I have a motion on the floor by Mayor Woolison and a second by City Council Member Doer to adopt resolutions to approve side letters of agreement amending the memorandum of understanding between the City of Menlo Park and SEIU, the Menlo Park's POA, and the Menlo Park's PSA to modify the city's medical premium contributions for the plan year beginning January 1st of 2024 and appropriate an additional $29,784 from the general fund unassigned fund balance in the fiscal years 2023-24. Any further city council question discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. We're now moving on to J4. If anyone wants to hit that motion button and a second button. Okay, we've got our Nash moving and door seconding. Thank you, Mayor Willis. So I have a motion on the floor by City Council Member Nash and a second by City Council Member Doerr to adopt a resolution to approve amendments to the management compensation plan document for unrepresented management positions effective November 19th of 2023. Any further City Council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. On the motion passes unanimously. And... <laughs> Now we are, or did I miss a no? We're now moving on to okay. J5. This is like a video game for those of us on the <laughs> dais because we, anyway, these are routine or not routine, but anyway, I've motioned. Is there a second? Oh, and Council Member Combs came in. So, uh, City Clerk Karen, yes, we have a motion and a second. Yes, thank you. I have a motion on the floor by Mayor Woolison and a second by City Council Member Combs to adopt a resolution to amend the salary schedule effective November 19th, 2023, with the updates provided by staff. Any further City Council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Wonderful. And it does, um, to... Uh... To Mr. Lloyd's point, it, it does bring a, a weight off of all of our shoulders to have a, a fair agreement moving forward with our with our employees. So thank you again. All right, we are now moving on to our informational items. Informational items are transmitted to the city council and staff's effort to provide an update on matters of importance to the city council. Informational items are not action items. However, a city council member, city staff member, or a member of the public may request to make a comment or ask a question on any of the informational items. City Clerk Karen, do we have any public comments on the informational items? Thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on our informational items K-1, city council agenda topics, or K-2, transmittal of city attorney billing, please engage that hand feature bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine. Participating in person, you can complete a speaker card at the back table and return to me at the clerk's desk. Final call for public comment on our informational items K1 and K2. Seeing no hands or cards, Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments regarding the informational items? Okay, we are moving on to L, which is our city manager report. Um, good evening, Mr. Murphy. What do you have for us? Uh, good evening. Uh, so I do want to just uh, highlight the next um, city council meeting. It's a special meeting as a single topic of uh, the um, zoning changes to be able to implement the housing element. So that's scheduled as a special meeting on November 28th. So indeed on a typical council night as a Tuesday. 
Uh, that's the Tuesday following the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, so there will be a packet released on uh, Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So just uh, important uh, topic, important timeline that we're keeping to. So just making sure that people are aware of the packet that will be coming out next week for that special city council meeting on November 28th. I believe it, we're targeting a 6, 6 p.m. start. So that's, uh, that's the main item for today. Thank you, City Manager Murphy. For any residents looking for conversational topics at your Thanksgiving table, I recommend you share that staff report with your friends and family and have a discussion about zoning on Thanksgiving and over the weekend. Okay, um, are there any City Council member reports this evening? Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you, Vice Mayor Willison. And just to follow up on the City Manager, we have three meetings left for this year. That's my report out. Thank you, Vice Mayor Taylor. Um, are there any other city, mem ma city council member reports? Okay, then um, it is 949 and I'm adjourning this meeting. Thank you. <laughs>